What is going on tonight, guys? Sorry, it's another late-ass stream. <laughs> that pesky job, if I could just get rid of it. What's going on, Chuck? Fuck Norris. King Chris. Melissa was first in the chat. I seen, I seen you, Melissa, but I was, like, trying to finish some shit. <laughs> uh, everybody hear me good? We got, the, we got the music working. My mic fucking sounds all right. We're good to go, right? Just checking. Just checking. It looks like everything's running smooth, man. I, this time I plugged everything in and it seemed to like work, so I don't know what the hell the problem was last time. I did do like a reset on some of the shit, but um, but yeah, we should be good to go. So, all right, yeah, so I got this all set up and ready to go. Um, I do actually have like, <laughs> so I got like half-ass pictures on my fucking, uh, oh, thanks, Chuck, awesome. Yeah, I got half-ass pictures on my fucking... Um, Acolyte shit that I wanted. It's a little side spin-off shit I was going to do when we go over the trailer. Um, and then, oh, you know what? While I'm fucking talking to you guys, I forgot on my screen share to add the comics that we're going to go through. So let me add that real quick. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, and then I also have <laughs> my X-Men shit. Like, I just watched it this morning. So, and like during the afternoon... And I started going off on a tangent on some other shit, so I'm just kind of going off the cuff on that. I didn't really take many notes. I pretty much know, like, my feelings on it and all that stuff. But, uh, but yeah, so it's going to be kind of a mixed bag here. We'll see how I can pull this shit off. Um, all right, let me take a look here. Let me just add this shit. That way everything can just flow nicely once I actually get started here. We're gonna, I'm going to try to move quick because there's, like, so much shit to get to. I don't even know how... I had all this other stuff planned. The good thing is next week should be easy because almost all the shit that I had planned for this week is going to have to go on the back burner till next week, um, you know, which is fine. You know, it is what it is, but that's kind of how it works with uh, with the news cycle and the release cycle. Like, so once Acolyte starts, you know, obviously we're going to be more, we probably will be reviewing less Star Wars comics at that point because we're going to be doing like all the live shit, like on the Acolyte reviews and, and freaking all that shit and talking about, you know, what a dumpster fire it is and all that shit. Um, so uh, we'll kind of do vice versa. Boom. We'll probably go a little more comic heavy on uh, on Marvel because uh, X-Men will probably be done by then. And then like, um, and, you know, I don't think there's any other movies. Maybe Deadpool will be out too, but we'll see. But, uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. All right. Almost done, dude. I'm just trying to make it to where I can just streamline and do all this shit. And we'll play it by ear and see what we can do and what we can cram in here. Um, the problem is when I start getting everything ready and then some shit happens, <laughs> I start fucking... My mind goes off and I start just doing other random shit and as things come to my head, so... Hopefully that shit's working for you guys. I mean, a lot of you guys are... A lot of my people that come here come here and re are return viewers, so that's always good signs. All right. <clears throat> You'll jump back in when you get home. All right, cool, Chris. Yeah, no worries, bro. Drive safe, dude. Drive safe. All right, cool. Yep, late as hell, man. All right, here we go. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, Grizzy, Melvin. Yeah, it was a freaking... Uh, <laughs> A clusterfuck, but that's what happens, you know. Shit, everybody wants to get on this topic, so it's all good. All right, cool. So everybody, everybody uh, knows the channel that's here, but this is uh, Justin Star Wars Marvel Purist live stream number twenty. Hope everybody's having a good week. Thanks again for being here. Anyone new to the channel or new to the live streams, this channel was created primarily to carry on the real Marvel and Star Wars stories, lore, legacy. Explore the continuity and lore that used to be passed on from creator to creator when the creators respected the previous writers and artists and everyone involved with the projects. Uh, anyone not subscribed or catching the replay or just randomly checking this out, take a look at some of my stuff. Let me earn your subscription. I'm sure you'll like what you're seeing. Uh, all right. Yeah. Feel free to drop any comments, suggestions, criticisms, whatever you want to do. I strive to get better at every live stream, every video, even though it seems like I don't. I think I'm kind of getting more of a hang of shit. So <laughs> it looked like uh, the mic was going to be a big strikeout, but uh, it, it ended up working, working fine. So, all right. So we'll jump right into the news. Well, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot to get into, so yeah, we will kind of just jump in, we'll kind of play it by year, 
Uh, I'm not, yeah, mostly, I'm not going to do Bad Batch Episode 8. I just, I fucking, that was the first thing I cut out. Like, I, I'm not even going to be doing a lot of the Marvel shit that I had planned. So, um, I could, I could probably make the same video for Episode 8 of Bad Batch as I did for, as I could for 5, which I skipped, and just make a thumbnail and have a screen that says filler and just play that shit for a few minutes. Uh, but honestly, like, the actual movement of the plot in that show is, like, so slow. I guess you could say slow as molasses, right? That's the way the, the old saying goes. Um, but yeah, there's one more thing that I want to get into before we get going. But before I do that, you guys let me know. What do you want to, you want to start with the 90s misogyny? You want to get into the X-Men 97 review? Or do you prefer like the Acolyte trailer breakdown and, and my thoughts on that? Um, you guys let me know right now and I'll give you my spiel on this and we'll go from there. Uh, those are going to be the main topics. I mean, I got a couple other trailers I want to take a look at, some other um, news that I want to review, and then we'll see if we can't get at least one Dark Force rising in. And then, yeah, like I said, we'll look at some toxic uh, comics from uh, from Marvel in the 90s, back when men were men and women were women, and there was not really a, a hard way to, dis to determine the two from each other. So, yeah, you guys let me know. Um, but, yeah, until then, I just wanted to kind of update and reiterate my mission creating YouTube content and what my up upcoming plans and goals and ideas are. Uh, anyways, thanks for being here again, guys. Uh, another thing I wanted to say, I'm trying my best to get the lore stuff that I've discussed out to you guys, summarizing and going over comic runs, book reviews, staying up to date with Star Wars, Marvel news, shows, etc., even covering uh, Disney, Star Wars, and Marvel. Um, so I'm trying to like cover it all, and then I got to kind of just go on, you know, what's what's hot, try to kind of at least get in that algorithm a little bit, you know, and uh, it's obviously kind of working, you guys, your guys' support and, and everything is helping me grow, so I appreciate it, uh, but most importantly, what I'm trying to do is compare and contrast the OG Marvel and Star Wars stuff that I love and give my thoughts and reasons why I love the old lore and storylines and why I don't, for the most part, like the lore and storylines coming from the, you know, mega corporation that owns both of these IPs. Um, obviously we'll touch on other stuff. I grew up liking here and there, like me and Cizo did the Dune talk. Um, you know, I know most don't like Rebel Moon. I want to give the second one a, a try. I like a lot of Zack Snyder stuff. I can say Rebel Moon's definitely not his greatest work. Um, uh, we'll, we'll get into that. When we look at that trailer, when they had the stuff peeling off the dude, I thought it was the girl. So I'm like, oh, that would have been a great explanation for her. But of course not. She's probably just normal, just awesome. So that's the way they do that shit. <laughs> but anyways, I know most of you know my spiel. Uh, but my goal is obviously to preserve the lore, canon, and continuity of these two great franchises and their creators and the creatives that helped properly expand them, transform them from small niche fandoms into mega IPs. I mean, Star Wars wasn't really niche, but I mean, it, it kind of was, you know, people were, you know, we'd get made fun of, you're the dorks that like Star Wars, da, 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 da. I mean, obviously it was a phenomenon when it first hit and all that, um, but yeah, unfortunately for us, they became massive, popular IPs and have been getting destroyed, so, uh, and then one of my biggest prerogatives, though, is to be unique and different and try to offer my own individual perspective and to integrate that source material into the modern day twisting and manipulating of the content, um, into the bastardized husk that they've become for the most part. Uh, I definitely don't want to be like discount this person or discount that person. And surely, you know, anyone who's li listened long enough can figure out for themselves that I'm not. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to continue to try to distinguish myself. And, you know, that being said, I run this channel, you know, all on my own, working full time, shitloads of hours, you know, yada, yada. So does most people on YouTube. Uh, and then, you know, I got my family and all that stuff. So uh, there's some great videos that I haven't even made yet that you guys have already heard, like that are here on my lives. And I just need to edit and I'd like to, you know, edit and kind of upgrade those and get those released. Um, but that's why I kind of chose my format to be live stream, um, and, and just cut the content from the live stream. Um, cause that just works better for me. And I think it's just kind of an easier thing and way for me to approach it. Uh, but again, I really appreciate those of you that are here faithfully every week. I also want to, uh, also you watch, like, share my videos out in discords and Twitter and wherever, you know who you are. And I can obviously credit a lot of my growth uh, to a lot of you anyways, uh, just, um, just uh, thought it was important as an update to get that out there. Uh, there's also uh, many other awesome Star Wars YouTubers, uh, to a lesser degree, Marvel YouTube creators in our circle, because I'm not as familiar with the Marvel ones. Um, but yeah, I just I just love that, like, despite people saying we're an echo chamber, um, we all have different techniques, approaches, personalities, you know, and even cooler is that a lot of us have crossover, like, favorite comic books, 
book runs, you know, uh, rankings of movies, games. But yet again, so many of us have completely different favorites in all of those aspects as well. Uh, and that's why one of my big, biggest missions of my channel that will take priority out of all my content will be the new show or, or segment. I'm going to call it a show because it's going to take a whole stream or multiple streams. And I'm going to be calling that pure, unadulterated Star Wars. Uh, the premiere of that is going to be with Raging Rhino on April 18th. And most likely the 25th, due to like the density of the first novel we'll be covering, which is going to be Darth Plagueis. Anyone that listened to Rhino streams, I know he's talked about it a couple times, but I think it's more fitting, more than fitting now, especially that the Wokalite is coming like a wrecking ball about to destroy the time period before, you know, one of my favorite EU novels of all time. Um, and I also have someone else lined up to discuss Heir to the Empire in detail and possibly a couple people ready to come on and discuss Darth Bane, Path of Destruction. Uh, well, obviously, I'm going to cover the whole um, Heir to the Empire trilogy, the whole Bane trilogy. I mean, most anyone who really knows me and my Star Wars like likes and dislikes, the Bane trilogy is my favorite trilogy and the Plagueis, Plagueis and then like Return, Revenge of the Sith. Those are probably like two of my favorite standalones. There's other ones, too. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I'll definitely be um, hitting both of those trilogies. Uh, my goal at the end of the day is to have as many EU Star Wars YouTubers and fans on as possible, preferably the biggest fans of each particular novel. Uh, that's why I kind of sought Rhino out because I've heard him talk about Plagueis just like I have. And you can just tell like he knows the story and he's into the story and he likes the lore and all that. So that's, I'm, I'm trying to pick and choose like people that I know are into, you know, why would I have him want to cover like, you know, one of the X-Wing books that he hasn't read yet because I know he's onto that series right now as well. You know, so I'm trying to pick people that I know are familiar with what they are, what their wheelhouse is. That way we can provide like the best content for everybody. Um, so if you guys know anybody um, that would want to come on and discuss the EU in long format and deep dive into, into these books, let me know. Let them know to hit me up. I don't care what their background is or exactly what they, you know, where they sit on the culture war uh, or if they're abstinent from the culture war. It doesn't matter. I want to talk to fans of the EU that can bring their perspective and expertise on the books that I love and they love. And then that way, again, we could provide you guys with some of the most engaging story, character, and lore driven EU content on YouTube. Uh, on the Marvel end, I plan on doing the same thing with some of the best or my favorite comic runs or graphic novels that I've read. Uh, I know I kind of mentioned it in passing to Blake, and he said he was down. Um, so we'll most likely, when I can you know, connect with him and figure out a date and all that, we'll uh, discuss the Rick Remender's Uncanny X-Force run. I think, I think he likes that one, and it is a pretty badass run that I'm familiar with. Um, same thing applies. If you know anyone uh, that you want to see me talk Marvel Comics with, whether it be a YouTuber or just somebody who will even just come on, you know, they can be faceless and just come on and bullshit with me, you know, uh, let me let me know and how to get in contact with them or have them hit me up. I don't care if it's somebody with a thousand subs, a hundred thousand subs, 150 subs. I just want to talk pure Marvel Comics with somebody who loves those same comics. That's what I'm talking about. And, and that's what this channel is all about. Uh, and there lies the problem. <laughs> I plan out streams and my mind wanders off and I start coming up with different ideas or different things to talk about. Next thing you know, I'm rambling on about stuff not on the agenda for the night. And that's kind of where we're at here. <laughs> so I apologize. It's kind of how my brain works. It's how I'm trying to like use creativity to, to kind of grow the channel and get people into the channel. So appreciate it. I am going to get a sip of water real quick. Woo! We got fire everywhere in the chat. Appreciate it. Decrepit. How you doing, man? Yeah, and Decrepit. I'm wrapping up Plagueis. I'm down to discuss if you'd like one. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm going to hit Plagueis with Rhino. I was considering, like, so, <clears throat> what I'm probably going to do... Here, let me try this mute button. Let me know if you guys can hear me drinking this water or not. All right, cool. I think the mute button... I think everything's working flawlessly tonight, so awesome. Um... But yeah, I'm gonna just one on one it with Rhino. Um, I was I was probably I'm probably gonna do panels, but small panels. Hopefully, you know, as I get as I get you know bigger, more of a following. Um, I, I probably won't ever go more than three people or like four people, including myself, um, because I think it's gonna, that would kind of just dilute it. You know what I'm saying? If you have like three or four people tops discussing it, it'll be a more of a flow in the conversation. And it also make it to where we could all fit all the stuff that we want to talk about. But yeah, let me know. Um, hit me up. You're on my, you're on my uh, Twitter, dude. So hit me up on Twitter DM, dude. And like, let me know what books you've read. What, cause you sounded very versed when you were on the Melvin community stream, dude. So yeah, I mean, I'm just, again, I don't care if people have a youtube channel or doesn't man it's just like 
We can dis. What does it say? Discuss my papers? You said, Melissa. Here, let me move my uh, my window over. Yes, yeah, we can discuss your. Pa- all right, cool. Yeah, I can send you a link, and you can come on, and we can talk about it for sure, dude. I am all good with that. X Wing Rogue Squadron. Yep, yep, for sure, Chuck. Uh, I know I'm pissed. I miss Melvin's stream mostly. I popped it. Yeah, I mean, I missed. I I told Grizzy because you know Grizzy had me mo- has me modding for him, and I'm like, yeah, dude, sorry. It's like I know I told you I'd, I'd be good on Wednesdays for you, but like I'm just so behind on this this stream because of all the shit that came out. <laughs> but he's cool, dude. He don't he don't give a fuck. Um, he's got other people modding for him as well. So same thing, man. I I kind of jumped in and out of Melvin's here and there, but. It's like, yeah, it is what it is. So, all right, cool. Yeah, Mike sounds perfect. Good. Yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping for. I turned it down a little bit. I know somebody had said it was like too low last time, but then when I was listening to the playback, I can kind of hear some reverb and stuff like that. So I messed with the gain and stuff like that just a tiny bit. And like, yeah, I figured I'll just keep fucking around with it a little bit here and there. I'm almost done. Like I already have my Clone Wars versus TCW, the first part of that, because I'm splitting it into two parts. It's like 20 something minutes long or whatever. Uh, but I have that one edited almost, but I want to like add pictures and stuff. Like I like to go all out on certain ones. And it's funny because usually the ones I go all out on don't get the views. <laughs> and then shit I just threw together. Like actually that first Clone Wars fits perfectly one, that that's like my best video by far. Like, and I literally almost didn't even make it. And fucking, um, yeah, and I just dropped it, and that thing just keeps getting views and views and views and shit. So I'm sure now that I have the other one, that one won't or something. It's just weird. The whole algorithm thing and all that, just how it works is fucking weird. Um, but, yeah, uh, I read the you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's the thing. So because somebody was asking me to cover something in one of my comments. Um, I can't remember who it was. Gordon, I think it was maybe. Um, but, yeah, so, on. yeah, Legacy of the Force is my favorite. Like, I like, I love NJO, dude. It's not that I don't. But I think, like, Legacy of the Force, like, out of the three big series post Return of the Jedi, I think that is like the most cohesive. The writers all kind of um, had each other's styles in mind when they were writing it. Just to me, it was the most cohesive story out of all of them. Um, I always do kind of criticize the ending um, just because the whole training with Jaina, like, I know they kind of use aspects of it, but I don't feel it was used enough. And I didn't like the ending as much, but you know, I get why people do and it doesn't bother them. Uh, but yeah, it, for me, it was kind of a letdown, but it's still my favorite out of all the like bigger series, anything more than the trilogies. Um, uh, but yeah, no, for sure, dude. And some people are going to be repeat. Like I already talked to a uh, dude that's going to be doing air to the empire with me. He kind of wanted to do Bane, but I already had some other people in mind for Bane. I may even include him on the Bane and just do a panel. Um, but I got some other ideas, um, with him as well. He's busy. He does YouTube stuff too. So, you know, it's the biggest thing is the schedule thing. Like it took me and Rhino about a week and a half week or whatever, like trying to get back and forth with each other just to connect even because of our time zone difference to figure it out. But yeah, so like I'm doing like just, you know, I'm going through the comics with you guys and stuff like that. I personally haven't read, like I've read Star Wars comics, but not a whole lot of them. Like I can guarantee I've, you know, like I've read probably like 60 or 70% of the EU books. I'm not near as versed on the comics. So that's why I'm kind of going because it's like a learning thing for me too. Um, But yeah, I'm trying to hit like the essential stuff and the important stuff for people that are getting into Star Wars because, you know, people are going to like eventually shy away from this Disney stuff and hopefully check out George Lucas and EU Star Wars, you know. Uh, so that's the goal. So yeah, I'm going to keep trying to do comic reviews and stuff like that. And the book reviews, like I'm really going to, and I am going to go back and do my chapter by chapter on Plagueis. And I am going to do a chapter by chapter on Bane. I wanted to do that because I know that's unique and different. And most, I don't think anyone really does that on YouTube, but that took a lot of work and it was very, I liked it. It was a lot of fun. I did the whole like species count and planet count. And I, I, For sure, I'm going to finish that. But right now, I'm just throwing different stuff out there to see what works and what people like. And on that one, it was very popular in the beginning, and then it kind of fell off. And I think that was probably just because there were longer videos, people that couldn't get caught up or, you know, whatever it may be. I don't know. got lost in the algorithm. Who knows? But, yeah. So, yeah. Hand of Thrawn duology is great, Chuck. That's a great, great series, dude. It helps, like, round out Pelion's freaking arc, dude. It's freaking good stuff. But yeah, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I, but I plan on hitting most of like anything that I like. I mean, I'll I'm, I'm gonna probably do the NJ NJO. I already have some 
lot of people in mind for NJO, especially certain people like certain books out of the NJO series. So yeah, I mean, I, I definitely am trying to do it, but I also got to build. I want to walk before I run. Um, so yeah, I'm just kind of picking people that are kind of in our circle that, that, that I know, but, but I don't care. Like, even if there's some chill, as long as they're not like a total freaking weirdo, um, that's down and to talk about the EU and they're not like totally freaking out of their mind, then yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't care, dude. I'll discuss the EU stuff with anybody. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I believe you're as big of a comic guy uh, as a big a comic guy as me. I'm only more DC leaning, but my favorite Marvel stuff is like Maximum Carnage, Lethal Protector, Silver Age. Spider- yeah, 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 for sure, decrepit. Yeah, and I'm yeah, and I'm heavy. I actually probably have more Image comics than DC. <laughs> it was just in the '90s, like in my day and age when I was at that age. What up, Neo, my boy? Um, when in that day and age, like Marvel was hot back then, dude. And I just loved all the characters. And I actually got into X-Men probably about a year before the animated series come out. So the animated series just kind of made it even better. Um, you know, but I was just collecting anything X-Men at that point. And then, you know, I, I tried to get on Spawn and, and I have the Max. Uh, oh yeah. So dude, um, oh, what's his name? Words of Paradise, dude. I'm, I'm sub to him, dude. Great guy. Great channel. Uh, he was talking about the Max just randomly on one of his streams, dude. Uh, and from image, cause his dad, he says, my dad's cool as fuck. You know, he got me into comics and all that. And I'm like, yeah, dude. And, and so he's all, nobody probably even knows who the man. I'm like, Oh, I got the max bro. I got like the fucking, I think I pretty have pretty much have the full run or whatever. It was also on like adult swim back in the day, back when they did like Eon flux and all that shit. But that fucking comic is sick, bro. Uh, but yeah, but I have DC stuff. You know what I'm saying? I have like death of Superman. I got some Batman stuff. I got some, some green lamp, but I know DC really well. Like me and my cousin used to play with the fucking DC toy. I had the fucking Hall of Justice. That's why. I, that's why I'm a big. I'm a big fan of the Snyderverse. I know people's gripes with it and all that shit, but it was building shit, and it was fucking like we were about to get Dark Side, bro. Like, fuck, you know, and it was just like instead they shit canned all of it. They're starting from scratch. And they're doing creature commandos and all this weird. And I like James Gunn, dude. I like Slither. I like the first. The first Guardians movie, the best, but you know, the other ones are whatever. Just I don't really care for the bastardization of Adam Warlock, but like, fuck, dude. Like, they're, they dropped the ball. They should have just said, we're going to keep the universe that Zack Snyder built, and we're just going to fucking change the stories and change the tone or do whatever. It would have been a lot fucking smarter for them. Now they're, like, fucking trying to dig themselves out of their own grave and probably never fucking will, so... Uh, but yeah, Maximum Carnage is great, dude. Yeah, yeah, and I can see... I can I, I can definitely see people that don't like Snyder style. All that. Like, I like... <clears throat> to me, I think if if like if he if there was a Darth Bane trilogy that was a direct adapt, I would fucking love him to be the director of it, dude. Because when he does direct adaptations, you know, like Watchmen, like three, uh, like three hundred, you know, um, his shit's good, dude. Um, the Dawn of the Dead fucking remake, I fucking love that shit too, dude. So, um, you know, but I I lean towards I like more of his stuff than I don't you know, but yeah, so I don't know, we'll see, I'm gonna give the Rebel Moon 2 a chance, because the full story's not even told, I am gonna give the, the fucking director's cut a chance, because that's the one he wanted to originally release, so whatever, you can debate the semantics of that and that, whatever, but he gives a fuck, uh, but yeah, yeah, no, and I understand the Superman approach, see, to me, it's Superman day one, getting his powers, or actually fighting, you know, and he's fighting a militarized, fucking trained, bred Kryptonian, so based off the premise and the build of that, my biggest problem was probably the Pa Kent death, because, you know, the whole thing of him dying of a heart attack in the comics and shit like that, it's just something that no matter how powerful Superman is, that he can't control or stop, so that kind of thing you don't want to lose, uh, but I understood, like, the dichotomy of, his adoptive dad versus his, you know, biological dad and all that. And the shit they did on Krypton and all that in the beginning, like that's fucking, that shit was sick, bro. Like I was all about that. And, and Man of Steel 2 is the movie he wanted to do. Like with Brainiac. Like I've been hearing rumblings, like they're going to be doing a Brainiac as a villain. And I'm like, fucking dude, that's what dude was trying to do before BVS. So anyways, all right. I don't want to ramble on too much about that shit. All right. So did you guys say, oh, you guys didn't say misogyny, acolyte or X-Men 97? I didn't hear. I didn't need another order. Yeah, my whole thing was I just like to see Krypton. It's kind of like when they did the Masters of the Universe movie. That's the first movie I saw in theaters. I was like five or whatever. Um, And the first one I could remember seeing in theaters, you know. Um, But, like, they didn't even do, like, uh, Eternia, bro. Like, how the fuck are you going to do that, you know? Talk about a George Lucas-inspired movie. Fucking that Masters of the Universe was a big jack off of fucking uh, Star Wars. (laughs) But, yeah. No, I hear you, bro. Yeah, we can debate the Snyderverse one day, too. I don't give a shit. That'll work for me. 
All right, let's take a look. All right, so nobody's wanting to say what they want to do here. So, all right, well, let's get into some news. Uh, news is going to be, uh, well, okay, first and foremost, I got the Ripaverse Yaira update. Um, yeah, X-Men is a show. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be talking about that, too. Uh, Decrepit the X-Men comic reboot. Because my theory was the MCU was going to do Krakoa. And do that Hickman run and skip all the source. Because my whole thing is they always like to skip all the source material. That's why we're all the way into the, like all the fucking 2017 comics. They like to skip all the, the fucking good shit and go over to the bullshit. So, yeah, that kind of was, was where I was leaning. But then all of a sudden I find out they're fucking rebooting that and fucking pissing all those people off too. So, uh, boom. Okay, yeah, so Yaira number one campaign. Rippa is killing it, dude. 1.25 million, one and a quarter million on the... Uh, on the fucking sales numbers there. So that's just, that's just fucking awesome, dude. Um, <clears throat> so shout out to the Sasuke sisters, Deborah Carita on the art, Ripa, the whole fucking Ripaverse team. Um, you know, uh, I just, I got ready. I got to, I have my shits in my cart and I haven't put in my order yet because I keep contemplating what shit I'm going to get and what I'm not going to get. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm going to go back. I'm going to re be reviewing all the Ripaverse comics. I'll probably do like the reviews and release order. I'll probably go back to ISOM number one and all that. That would make the most sense being that I haven't reviewed any of them officially. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the deal there. So congrats to Ripa and the Ripaverse team. And uh, he's definitely a good well, We fella. always called each other good fellas. Like you'd say to uh, somebody, you're going to like this guy. He's all right. He's a good fella. He's one of us. All righty. And then on top of that, we've got the Woka Light trailer is here. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's go ahead and touch on some of this other shit. Um, no, you know what? Let's go Woka Light, dude. Why not? Let me see. Uh, Hickman can stay on Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, I say Woke Light while it's still hot. Up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do Woke Light. Woke Light, get it over with. Yeah. I got some good, um, I didn't get to do all my notes on the shit. I'll, I'll remember. I got some notes and I got, I got a little, um, sidetrack. I don't know if you guys were in our, uh, chat, like, yesterday. This dude came in. <clears throat> I think he, I, I don't know if, I can't remember his name now, dude. He got all butthurt because I put him on timeout because him and somebody were arguing over yellow lightsabers. So, you know what I did? I, I looked up, you know, I, I, I mean, I know a lot about, obviously, the EU and shit. So I know all the yellow lightsaber wielders in the EU. But it's funny when people come into Melvin's chat or Rhino's chat or whoever, and they're trying to educate other people on the EU. I found it kind of funny. Uh, but anyway, so I kind of got a little side. I'm going to have a little side mission I'm going to do when we when we review Acolyte. Um, but cause I had to research all the Disney wars, fucking yellow lightsabers. Cause that's the whole thing is the Disney yellow lightsaber agenda, you know, and how they're trying to shove those into everything. You know, the comics, uh, the fucking, they're having Luke use them in fucking empire and all that. And the Charles Soule uh, fucking comics and, you know, this, this, that, and the other. Now we got them in Wokalite. You got them in the fucking high Republic books and comics and you got it fucking Ray at the end of fucking the fall of Palpatine and all that shit. So we'll get into that. Uh, haven't followed Ripaver. Seems he has genuine hype over the character. Yeah, and you know, Ripa is, uh, it's not just because he's a cult polarizing YouTuber. He's got real, yeah, and he really is a fan, bro. Like, I, I started, Ripa's probably the YouTuber I've followed the longest, dude. So, I mean, I know he's genuine about comics and shit. I know I've been following him for a long fucking time, dude. Way back, even before the Captain Marvel fucking bullshit. Uh, but yeah, and then, uh, but yeah, no, he's, he's definitely good, dude. He's got a good team, dude. And he's got, like, good, like, um, He's got old school vets, and then he's got like the Saskas are like my age, dude. So they're younger and sh younger ish, <laughs> you know. Then we're in our forties, but you know that's that's young in that industry. Sent to the world between worlds, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, dude, I gotta mod all these other fucking nutcases that come in, dude. Don't get butt hurt when you get sent to the fucking world between worlds every now and then, if you're uh, fucking causing a ruckus. Honestly, thought they would have started with Crack Hood without skipping everything, just using that situation to explain why they've been hiding. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I thought, dude. I really don't understand that mission they're on with the yellow. Just change the change. Yeah, exactly. It changed the change. Kind of like I was saying about the Ahso Ahsoka. Here, let's just give her this lightsaber change to retcon the book. Just to fucking fuck with it. Like, Filoni is purposely like, fuck you guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the hell is that shit, dude? So, yeah. I don't know. All right, let's... Um 
Let me find this fucking trailer, dude. Where am I at? Appreciate you being here, Neo. I know. I does later does later work for you too. I know it's because all the my California peeps, dude. You know, so I know you guys are probably the only ones fucking watching. So, <laughs> but I get it. Like, fuck, dude. I'm like, uh, I think I'm Disney. You know, like, hey, I'm uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and wait until two in the morning so everybody can fucking not watch this shit, and then I can complain about why nobody's watching my shit. Um, okay, cool. All right, so let's get to it. Hopefully the sound's good and all that. I tested all this shit out. We had no sound issues with fucking anything else. Um, so, all right, here, let me, I gotta put my little, I've been not having my earphones in because then I blow my own eardrums out because I gotta probably get a different set of earphones for this. Okay, so do you guys want me to play the whole trailer through or do you want me to pause it as we're going through the trailer? What do you guys, how do you guys want me to do it? You guys let me know and I'll try to use that because you guys are my, my main peeps. So you let me know how you want me to do it and then that'll be the way that I kind of default do it until otherwise uh, discussed. I'll give it a little minute here for it to catch up. Huge fan of the orange sabers from the old Republic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I did a little research on the orange too, Chuck. And I and I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to claim to be a Disney aficionado or anything like that. So uh, just doing a little bit of. I didn't do like heavy digging or anything where I was trying to put all this shit together. That's what sidetracked me from actually taking better notes on my X-Men review. <laughs> so that may suffer as a result because I was just like, I don't know, I just started getting into this yellow lightsaber bullshit. And then I tried to save a bunch of pictures and half of them are fucking corrupted and bullshit. So whatever. Um, all right, yeah. So do you guys want me to... Uh, oh shit, let me put my uh, plug this motherfucker in so my stream doesn't end on me. Um, frame by frame or full on, then break down. <laughs> you're just living on it <laughs> alright bro well let's see I guess I'll just play it by ear and figure out how I want to do this shit okay where's this bitch at um, here let's do a sound check first yeah I mean I'm hearing it you guys just tell me if you can close your eyes your eyes can deceive so to me I, I could be wrong so i looked i went back and i looked at the last jedi trailer it wasn't in that and then i looked at the last jedi teaser which is the first one they did during comic-con and all that and it's uh just breathe just breathe and that's all they show in the trailer but i think that and before that, in the actual movie, he says, close your eyes, now just breathe and shit, right? So I feel like it's almost like uh, like they're doing a callback to The Last Jedi. How fucking convenient, right? And then meanwhile, we have, um, here, we'll go back here. We got the diversity squad. It was nice to see an alien here, right? I think there's two fucking aliens here, right, on Coruscant, right? And then all of a sudden, you get into the city part, and, and they all disappear again. We're back to only humans, kind of like Andor. Um, so they tried to do that just to curb some of the uh, uh, people talking shit. Okay, and then here, so we got, here's Asian kid right here, and then we got an alien right here. Let me go back, close your eyes. And then we got the eight, we got the Asian master. And then here's this, we got a white female over here, the Karen. There's another Asian chick, right? Okay. See what I mean? That's like all humans. Oh, there might have been one alien. Got lots of diversity up in here. Oh, there's another alien. There's the other one. The one when they say close your eyes, you can't close his eyes. So I'm going to backpedal a minute. Okay, here's that. I know you guys have probably all seen this shit. This is kind of old news. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that it? So, okay. So one thing I noticed, and I have a feeling, here, let me make sure you guys are hearing, son of a bitch. No sound, no audio. Okay, hold on. You guys are still hearing me, though, obviously, right? Yeah, okay, here. We'll, we'll start it from the top. Let me, um, go to share screen options. Okay, yeah, that's there. That's fucking not good. Um, can you 
quick second because this is a different setting than my other stuff. Oh, okay. 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 Let's see. Hopefully this don't fuck the whole stream up. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't make me reset the whole stream to make it actually work. All right. Okay, yeah, that's already set there. Okay, maybe this will work. Let's see. No audio, we just hear... Okay, not the trailer. Okay, cool. All right, so let's try it again. We're going to get this shit figured out, guys. Once I have it all... It's because I added the mic. I made a tech upgrade and fucking reverted into, like, a beginner again. Okay, here we go. Let's see. I'll be quiet. You guys listen. Tell me if you can hear it. We're on 30-second delay, so... Close your eyes. Your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. Masquerade, Masquerade what's, what's going, going on, bro? Echo. echo. <laughs> so, so now there's, there's an echo. echo. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, think the... Okay, okay let, let me try, try one, one more thing. thing. I, can I can mute... mute. Oh, okay. okay. Well, well, did, did the, the echo, echo stop because I, I paused the, the thing? thing? Shit, man. I gotta, I gotta switch, switch to StreamYard, stream dude. dude. This shit's just this getting ridiculous. ridiculous. Uh, okay, because okay. I, I can... can... I'm, I'm echoing. echoing. Yeah, yeah motherfucker, dude. dude. Okay, okay, let, let me try this real quick. All right. All right, now, now I'm going to count, count to five, five and then after, after five, five I'm going to change the setting. setting. You, you guys, guys tell me if I'm echoing, echoing anymore. One, two, three. three. Oh, oh shit. shit, hold on, that ain't going to work. One, two, three, three four, five, six, seven. How in the hell am I on? Oh, geez, my boy. Chris, oh, getting that Darth Bane up there with the $10. Sound quality is great on the mic. Cleanest echo ever. <laughs> awesome, Neo. Appreciate it. No echo now. Yeah, so I'm going to have to... Fuck. Well, yeah, okay, so it's... Yeah, I'm going to have to find a new way to do this shit. You're going to have to just bear with the echo. I mean, I can switch every time I pause it. But then you guys, yeah, you're not going to be able to hear it if I don't do that. Oh, let me try one more thing. Let's, Let's try, try this. Because now, now you're, you're probably hearing, hearing echo, echo again. again. Let me try this shit. shit. All right. Okay, let's see. Maybe that works. Let me see. Good, all good, go. <laughs> Echo's gone. I'll find StreamYard, a tad easier, my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, with the, you can do more shit on the free stream labs than the free stream yard. And then I also don't know about the supers on StreamYard. I don't know if they do that like they do with stream labs. Uh, but here, let me see. Okay, so am I echoing again or no? Echo's gone still? And you guys can still hear me? I know I can fucking hear myself. Okay, so I think I have it figured out. So I think it's monitor only for the mic. And then both. Monitor and output. It's gone. Okay. Hey, we're learning. Or is the echo back? <laughs> Fuck. No. Yep, yeah, echo's gone. Okay, echo's gone. All right. We'll, we'll put Boomer in it. Chris, you're a G. Thank you for the 10 bucks, man. I appreciate it, man. Um, okay, cool. I'm gonna, trust me, I'm not going out spending this money. I'm hoarding it for fucking tech upgrades. The mic's the step one, streaming software step two. All right, here we go. So let's go here with the beginning. Okay, so one thing I wanted to say. So I feel they're over, they're, they're overreacting to fans, right? So they're fucking up their own continuity again. 
So what did the, I, I meant to find the trailer and I couldn't find it. So when they released uh, the High Republic, their thing was, this is the Jedi at their peak of their, of their knowledge and wisdom. And they have the different kinds of robes and all that because this is just the fucking best. There's no dark side and this is that. Uh, but what did fans complain about with Mandalorian season two, three, uh, Star Wars being a lived in universe and it being too clean. So what did they do here? If you look, they try to make the fucking uh, Jedi temple on Coruscant See how they're trying to make it look um, right over this guy's head to the right, this alien. You could see like cracks and shit. You could see like dirt and scuff and all that. Now, if this is the time of prosperity and this, this, that among the Je Jedi, this shit should be pristine and clean. In fact, uh, it pretty much is during the prequels. So to me, it's fan overreaction. They tried to throw that in because again, this is the first thing you're seeing on that trailer. I don't know. It's just a, just an opinion of mine. I don't I don't know if it's fucking true or not oh yeah i'm not signing on that okay so uh yeah that's just something that i noticed off the top um that i hadn't heard anybody else talk about and you kind of see it a couple other places but i really noticed like this is the jedi temple this is supposed to be them at their peak uh why are we having these cracked fucked up things you think it would have been all cool but i don't know let's see all right here we go close your eyes your eyes can deceive you. We must not trust them. So again, so close your eyes. So again, I think A Last Jedi, like I said, when I looked up the um, trailer, it wasn't in the regular trailer, but it was in the teaser trailer, just breathe. And then I think in the actual movie, he says, close your eyes, just breathe. I'm telling you, I think that's like a, they're giving a shout out, heading on to The Last Jedi. I would not be surprised at all. Uh, so again, like, okay, yeah, so this is more dusty. Now, this probably isn't Coruscant, obviously, but yeah, I just find that they tried to quell, like, fan complaints, but they're not keeping in consideration what they said about their own lore for that particular time period. Uh, that's just me, though. So here's Purple Robed. Tell me what comes into your mind. And of course, yeah. Life. There are aliens. Balance. I see fire. Now, Carrie Ann Moss, Trinity, she looking like a nun. They even have, like, over here, it looks like the confessional box and shit, right? <laughs> hey, Father, I have sinned. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so I think that's funny, too. And again, yeah, so I think they tried to make the wood look kind of like, unless it's just my screen and what I'm looking at, but it looks more like run down and all that. So I don't know if they're trying to overcompensate for fan complaints or, or what. So and then, of course, we got we got Trinity in here. So we're going to have her do some Matrix shit because, you know, she was an actress in the Matrix. So we might as well use her for what she's known for. Right. <laughs> And then what is up with this? So she, they, sorry, <laughs> she looks like, man, what the fuck? Is she like a member of the fucking Lin Kuei or something? You know, she's got like Mortal Kombat mask and fucking, I don't know, dude. And then look, okay, yeah, so again, so she's got enough. That's a cut from her already. Or again, they're trying to make it look, 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 look more lived in or whatever. Uh, but anyways, and I, I'm not a fan of this uh, Jedi that doesn't use a lightsaber shit. Like, I don't know, that's kind of weird. Like, I don't know, again, I'm not a, a Disney aficionado, and I sure as hell am not a High, High Republic specialist, but um, I don't remember hearing about all these Jedi running around without lightsabers in High Republic. I'm pretty sure they all the ones that I've seen are wielding them, so uh, I don't know, it's kind of odd. Someone is killing Jedi. It doesn't make sense. And this guy's like the most unconvincing actor in the world. 
Uh, loving is loving the haircut, dude. It definitely fits the High Republic era. You guys that have uh, seen all my High Republic videos uh, know that we've uh, covered some of that. Uh, and then this is the High Republic robes. I think they look disgusting. They're like that yellow color, I guess, to go. With this. What happened? I what happened? I said, yes. What happened? I sensed the darkness. Has a fucking man bun, dude. Like, what is up with that? That's that's fucking funny. Uh, anyway, so we got another Wookiee. They really like Wookiee. I think maybe it's a, all the Return of the Jedi haters. They're like, we heard them talk shit about George with Ewoks. So let's... We got a Wookiee in our show, in our cartoon, and we'll throw a Wookiee in the Acolyte, and that'll make things better. What happened? I sensed darkness. Okay, this, so this one... This is going to be Ver Vernestra Row or something. That's the one that all the shields like, especially the High Republic ones. Now, she was, like, younger when the High Republic started. But her, the books are based about 150 to 180 years before the alleged time uh, period for this. Um, so I looked up her species, and actually there's no... Um, length of age or like mortality among her species in canon or in the EU. Um, so they, they dodged a bullet there. I wonder if that's why, because I was trying to see if there was inconsistencies with the EU lore. Um, but they they are, it's a near human. I can't remember the name of the damn, what, near, Neuralin or whatever. But they are like a, a near human species. Um, so their life expectancy is probably in the ballpark of humans. Uh, and then the fact that she's a Jedi, obviously she has probably increased life expectancy, just like a human Jedi as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I just found that interesting because I was trying to, I'm looking for inconsistencies, obviously. Uh, but yeah, she's the big one. I think she has a lightsaber. She has a lightsaber in one of the books, but then I think she has a lightsaber whip. Um, so it's going to be interesting if they're going to try to do that. Cause I remember that used to be a big criticism that everyone used to mount on the EU because of, um, the lightsaber whip, um, that was, uh, featured in the EU by Githany among others. I think there's a couple others, but Githany for sure. Uh, all right, here we go. Yeah. Same thing here. So yeah, again, is this on Coruscant? Cause again, they have it kind of looking weathered and shit. Like, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't go with what they're saying about the universe for that time period that at least from what I remember from that original high Republic launch when they did that big old video and they were like, look at us. We're at Skywalker ranch, you know? So I, I'm going to have to double check and rewatch that one. Maybe we'll watch it again so we can match up the inconsistency. I won't do it right now, but maybe on another stream. All right, here we go. This isn't about good or bad. And another thing. <laughs> so they love doing this. You stop everything with the force with your fucking hands and shit. Like lightsaber blades vibro vibro blades like it's this new thing and i know satil sean does it in the cinematics and fucking sotor and shit and i know yoda uses two to menace with uh fucking in return of uh, revenge of the sith versus yoda uh, or versus yoda versus sidious um but yeah like i don't know it seems like they all can just force stop everything in the air and that's just not an easy feat to to do like they're just all fucking able to do that randomly and all that oh well satil sean did it you know and she didn't even do it the same way yoda did i think it's a different technique if i remember correctly uh, anyways okay here we go this is about power and who is allowed to use it and that's the down with the patriarchy, right? With the matriarch, it's all about power. And who's allowed to use it? Uh, you could see, like, the wokeness in this shit. We'll get into X-Men 97 because, surprisingly enough, the actual content isn't as bad as, like, uh, it's kind of like House of the Dragon, to, in, in my opinion, right now. It's, um... You can see it there, like undertones, but it's not overt or anything. And you're actually hearing it more from the production crew and the creators and all that stuff than you are from the actual story that's being told. But, uh, okay, here we go. What is that? All right, 
right, there we go. All right, so let me check you guys out real quick. Carrie Ann Moss is, still, is a shill. <laughs> all right, let me back up here. Do, 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 do. No echo, all good. Echo is gone. Okay, string are easier. Yep, gone. No, no echo. Awesome. <clears throat> not reading that bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell no. I know. I remember Melvin was saying, you should read the High Republic and freaking, and I'm like, dude, I'll probably fucking commit suicide if I read the High Republic, dude. You don't want me to self-terminate, brother. <laughs> But uh, I because I remember once so I did try to listen to a YouTuber stream about the High Republic and I was just like, oh, my God, all the shit they were talking about. I, I, I couldn't get into it, dude. I was it was really cringy for me to watch about 40 minutes of this review. I just it was pretty cringe. Um, let's see. Honestly, at the back of the Tales of the Jedi covered it better. Covered what better back of the Tales of the Jedi? Masquerade, what part of Tales of the Jedi are you talking about? Like like saber, like yellow lightsabers and shit like that? Carrie Ann Moss is a show. Yep. <laughs> she is never this familiar with Star Wait. She is never this familiar with Star Wars. Aren't you? Isn't she? Is that what I meant? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, Pantry Protector. What's up, man? I've, I've seen you here before. Good. Glad you came back and checking it out. The Jedi use martial arts outside of lightsaber combat, but their main weapon is still a lightsaber. This shit will be disappointing for my low, low hope. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know for sure. I mean, at least, like, <laughs> the the uh, martial arts they're talking about, they kind of described, like, that's what Ezra was going to be doing in that Ahsoka show, and he is sure as hell wasn't doing that, so... Um, yeah, I mean, whatever, but it looked kind of crouching tiger, hidden dragon. And it just, the, she just, ju he just jumps in the air, like right in front. Like that's an easy takedown on somebody. Like if you're actually really fighting, it's kind of similar to like the Ahsoka Anakin fight, how it was just the, the choreography on it was terrible, dude. Like if he really wanted to hit her, it was like easy to nail her because, you know, she was leaving herself totally open, but obviously they're doing it for the cinematic value, but it's definitely not like the way it was when Hayden and Ewan were training on um, Revenge of the Sith. That is only a rare moment when a Jedi used a Star Wars equivalent of martial art. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And versus Dooku. Oh, yeah, versus Dooku. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that, Anderson. Good call. Yep, you're right. Uh, hey, would you believe me that Yoda has been there in the Old Republic era, but has not seen that often? Yeah, yeah, he's a uh, Minch, Minch Masquerade. He was in a comic with the name Minch, and it's kind of like an origin of him. He was a Padawan in that one. Um, it was about 500 BBY, I think. Uh, but yeah, that was still considered the Old Republic era uh, in the real canon. Uh, no, it was supposed to be for the high-level Masters of the Force. Uh, also, it was ripped from J.K. Rowling's wording. Uh, Mastery, exactly. It was a supplement to lightsaber combat. Star Wars MCUOG, my brother. What is going on, dude? Long time no see. Hope you're doing well, man. You and the fam. Uh, they have to kill off every single character in the show to not pass the info of the Sith. Yes, no way Disney is killing off diversity. Continue continuity will be broken. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's so that's been my argument with Andor, Chuck. So all these female Imperial high-ranking officers, where do they go for a new hope? Do they do like a gender cleanse or some shit in the Empire? Like what happened? They all got fired on the same day or something like that. Um, Palpatine hired somebody like Elon to come in and pink slip everyone right before A New Hope. Like, come on, man. Same thing when they're introducing these species and all these creatures and shit in High Republic. Like, where do those all go? Is there like a mass genocide of all these fucking creatures and whatnot as well? All these creatures we never saw after that? That doesn't make any sense, man. That's that's why they're kind of destroying their own stuff. They had the universe laid out for them. I mean, fuck, Disney likes to plagiarize everything. They could have just plagiarized the EU and they would have been good. Um, what Obi-Wan told Luke about uh, to, je, the Jedi being guardians of peace and justice for over a thousand generations. Yep, OG, what's up? Hope you guys are doing well. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Awesome. Good to see you here, brother. I know it's late as fuck on a work night, dude. I'm, I'm an insane son of a bitch. What can I say? Okay, yeah, getting back to your point, Chuck. So that's the freaking awesomeness of the fucking EU, bro, and the continuity that it didn't have. I'm saying that in shill voice, obviously, because Rula 2, and that's like, I love Path of Destruction, and yeah, it's probably the best of the three Bane books, but Rula 2 is right fucking up there with it for me, dude. It really, you get that extra character development of Zana, um, but the ending of Rula 2 is fucking awesome, bro. They get the, you get the duel on Tython, they fucking merc all those Jedi, and then they get 
followed and the Jedi go, um, you know, because the fucking healer says you got to call and turn yourselves in. Da, 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 da. I'm not going to give too many spoilers away for people that haven't read it. But then there's a nice, unique way they clean up the whole fucking mess. That way the Jedi don't know the Sith were there or the Sith they thought were there are dead. So, yeah, they fucking were very smart about the way they did that shit. Uh, Carpishan's a fucking master. He's like, for me, it's like Luceno, Carpishan, and probably Troy Denning, dude. Those are probably my, uh, and then I like Aaron Alston as well. Um, and it's not that I don't like Zahn. Zahn stuff's great too, but I just, for me, those authors are the best. I really like Kemp too. Just don't go on his Twitter. Uh, but uh, uh, Kemp's good too, but uh, like he he has a little more limited amount of work compared to the rest of them. But I fucking love Deceived, bro. That to me is like one of the most underrated books. I wish there was a little more Malleus in it, but it's still a dope story. Um, okay, cool. All right, yeah. So um, you've yet to read the Darth Page. Oh yeah, Masquerade. You gotta you gotta get on that, bro, for sure. Well, I'll be covering. Like I said, I'm doing deep dive on Plagueis with Rhino, and then I'm gonna probably do Heir to the Empire. And I think instead of just doing the full, I mean, it can, it's gonna be depending on the guests that I can get to and when I can get them. Uh, but instead of maybe just doing the full Heir to the Empire, since we're already doing the comics, I may jump and go like Heir to the Empire, Path of Destruction, and then do Dark Force Rising, and then Rule of Two, and then do Last Command, and then go to fucking Dynasty of Evil or something like that. That way I'm kind of bouncing back and forth or something like that. Uh, but again, it's going to kind of depend on, on my guests and like when we can schedule all, all that. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, so this show is the main reason uh, that I wanted to discuss uh, Darth Plagueis' book first on pure, unadulterated Star Wars with Rhino to preempt the bastardization of the time period right before or even during Plagueis and Tenebris' tenure as the real Sith Lords of this era. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's basically why I have that one scheduled first. Um, but yeah, so another thing I wanted to get into uh, was this Disney yellow lightsaber agenda, and it is definitely a thing. Uh, they've retconned Empire uh, and reimagined it in the Charles Sewell comics, and they gave Luke Soywalker the Disney version of a yellow lightsaber uh, from Empire all the way through until Return of the Jedi. So like in all the comics in between Empire and Return of the Jedi timeline and Disney, uh, they give Luke a yellow lightsaber. Uh, obviously, Wei gets the yellow lightsaber at the end of Fall of Palpatine, uh, and there's no doubt that she'll be uh, she'll be um, using that yellow lightsaber uh, when she does her uh, next sequel trilogy or whatever they're going to call the next one. See, we've got Luke Soy Walker right here with his yellow lightsaber, and Charles Soule, he's the same one who has Kira with no Force ability, uh, you know, holding her own versus Darth Vader and shit, right? Yeah. Great, great shitty writer. And then here's Way. I know somebody changed the color on this one. The photos I had of from Fall of Skywalker weren't fucking working for whatever reason. They were corrupted, so I used this one. It, I think it suits Ray a little better. <laughs> Screaming woman face. Um, and then we have the Jedi Temple Guards in TCW. More Disney garbage. Uh, we also had Asajj Ventress had a yellow lightsaber that she gets on the black market in the end of TCW. Uh, and then there's the Zygerian Tosan. She's in like the prequel trilogy. Uh, uh, it's a prequel tr trilogy in the Disney canon. She's got a yellow lightsaber as well. Uh, and then we have... Um, uh, yeah, then we get into the High Republic. And we have Indira Stokes and Loden Greatstorm. Man, the fucking names they come up with these people. So this is Loaded... Great, or Loden, sorry. Loaded, Loden, whatever. He's a Twi'lek yellow light slaver slanging High Republic great. Uh, and then we have um, Kevmo Zinc. <laughs> Kevmo. That's Kevmo over there with the, uh, he's got like a blue face with fucking uh, pink cheeks. Yep, he's uh, sporting a yellow lightsaber too, High Republic. And then we have Ram Jamoram. Ram Jamoram. And Ram Jamoram, you guys will know, is on one of my thumbnails for a High Republic book review. Uh, this is Ram Jamaram on the right. And that's a fucking dude, by the way. I wish the other pictures I had saved, they didn't come out either. <laughs> so <laughs> He looks like a very non-looking dude. That's a dude. Um, and then, yeah, so he's got himself a, a yellow lightsaber. And then we got also from the um, 
uh, Fallen Order game. We have Dagon or Dagon or whatever his name. He's from the High Republic. He's the one they pull out of like a fucking cloning cylinder or whatever shit is in the game and and he's like missing an arm it looks like he needs a couple sandwiches and uh yeah he has a yellow lightsaber as well um i guess he's in the high republic books or comics or whatever uh and then we have the nihil antagonist this mochon row mo mo morshan row this fucking idiot from the high republic he's got a yellow lightsaber too you know, and it's weird because I thought um, in Disney, the lightsaber color goes to the what the person is, right? Like if you're a, you know, if this type of person or temperament or personality, that's at least the way that I understand the Disney canon. And that means your lightsaber will be blue and your kyber crystal will turn green. So what happens when this motherfucker takes it, right? If he's bad, shouldn't his turn red? If he's uh, evil, I mean, oh, wait, they have to bleed them. They, bl- quote, unquote, bleed the lightsabers, right? That's the, the, the way the Disney can. It's hard. The Disney can is so contradictory of itself. Uh, not only that, we have orange uh, lightsabers and orange-red lightsabers for Dark Jedi or Deadi- Jedi who became Dark Side, uh, but not completely. That's the So that's what I've been looking up, and I, I got to dig a little deeper. But my thing is, apparently, if they're not truly that Dark Side, um, then their the kyber crystal only bleeds to the orange color because they're doing it for other reasons, just to be evil or something like that. That's the shit that I, um, you know, just slight research was finding. Again, I'd be lying if I told you I was like a big Disney lore aficionado or something like that. But yeah, <clears throat> that's the fucking supposed way it's going to be. I didn't have enough time to get the pictures up, but we got Shin Hadi, Balin, Balin Skull, whatever his name from Ahsoka. Uh, they both have that orange red lightsaber, and then there's a guy named Chode, or what's his name? Ch- here, hold on, let me look at my notes here. It's not Chode, I'm making that up. Jode, maybe? Like, where the fuck's his name, dude? Um, yeah, whatever the fuck his name is. So you got that guy that's in Fallen Order, and you got um, when the other guy turns fucking dark side, the antagonist of Fallen Order, the the Dagon guy, he ends up getting his fucking orange lightsaber too so whatever that's their whole thing now so they're turning sith red into fucking orange and they're turning majority of the jedi shit into yellow dude so it is a big fucking deal somebody's arguing about the eu um i know the fucking eu dude you know what i'm saying there's there's fucking plenty of jedi in the eu that had yellow lightsabers nobody's fucking debating that we're not fucking stupid dude we're all most of us are hardcore star wars fans i think it's funny when another guy comes into somebody's chat fucking talking about everybody else doesn't know what they're talking about or it's not that big of a deal it's just the writing of disney no fuck that it's what disney's trying to do and they're fucking up the whole history of the yellow lightsaber we had like plo coon had a yellow lightsaber for a little bit the great kyle katarn was a member of loose jedi order i'm sure most people know kyle katarn from dark forces dark forces 2 jedi academy originally he had a green blade but then it was destroyed by a dark jedi i think it was bach right and then he used Dar- um, the dark jedi yun's yellow lightsaber after he sacrificed himself uh for katarn in an act of redemption i think it was on what um valley of the jedi or whatever and then katarn fights and it, everybody else using the light say the yellow lightsaber in his honor and then i think then he like retires it and he eventually goes with a blue uh, lightsaber when he gets knighted uh, we have arkin and Thexen from the from sotor from the eternal empire obviously that's fucking old republican shit uh we have uh Tyvoka, the wookie jedi from the star wars republic comics i think it's like number 36 or something it's like prequel era as well he gets fucking murked in like the first issue or whatever and then we have obviously basila sean everybody knows basila sean she's probably the most famous yellow lightsaber wielder um you know from kotor um and then there's a severance tan she was a a chiss dark acolyte uh, I think she was like a Dooku apprentice. She was in the Galactic Battlegrounds PC game. That's like a deep cut, right? Uh, and then we have, uh, what, Ganner Rice, Riceode, I think it is. He's also an NJO as well. Um, he um, fucked up, um, he got fucked up by a Yuzhan, Yuzhan Vong. Uh, he created the Yellow Saber when changing his approach and tactics. And then he fought alongside Anakin Solo. And then he ended up killing himself along with all these other Yuzhong Vong along with uh shit I can't remember the name of the creature it's been fucking ages 
since I read NJO. But anyways, he drops like a fucking building structure down and kills them all. He had a fucking yellow lightsaber too, dude. Um, and then there's uh, a- Anya Galarondo, I think her name was. She was in Luke's Jedi Order. She wasn't even force sensitive, but she had a yellow lightsaber when she first encountered like I think it was like Han Solo or whatever, right? Like her family was in a rivalry with them or. Some shit like that. I, I can't remember the specifics. Um, and then we had, like, Jaden Core, dude, from the fucking Paul Kemp novels. Um, he had a fucking yellow lightsaber. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like us. It's like we don't know this. And then we had, uh, what, Zane Carrick. Uh, he was from the Knights of the Old Republic comics. He had a fucking yellow lightsaber. Uh, Mavra Zane. You know, there's a, so there's fucking, there's plenty of fucking examples. We know that the... Yellow lightsabers were in the fucking EU. We're not fucking stupid. It's the way that Disney's using them and fucking bastardizing them and making them like shit. So, yeah. Uh, Fight choreography was fucking terrible for me. Um, Obviously, there's lots of, you know, skin diversity. Uh, But I noticed, well, I guess except for the Mario Van Peebles from Jaws 4, um, um, there's not really uh, much empowering haircuts. That's one thing that I did notice. Um, yeah, that's right. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, Jaws 4, uh, but this dude right here that we saw, where is he at, dude? The one that's like, Jedi are being killed, and I don't know why. Yeah, that guy right there. He looks like Mario Van Peebles from Jaws, man, you know? He was like friends with one of the fucking Jaws family folks and shit. Uh, that's what he reminded me of when I saw him. Fuck, I can't remember his name now. Hoagie was the fucking white old dude who flew the helicopter in at the end. Anyways, um, but yeah, so, uh, and Jedi from the High Republic books, old as fuck, how does she, oh yeah, 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 that's Vanestra Rowe, my notes on Vanestra Rowe, like, how does she live that long, like I said, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything regarding the age for her species, uh, Dark Side, remember wearing, a, yeah, looking like a member of the, uh, Lin Kuei, piss sabers everywhere, Charles Sewell is proud, that's right, yep, okay, talking about the universe looking clean, I'm just making sure I hit all my points here, yeah. My last one was close your eyes. Tell me what comes to mind. Quote unquote. Removing my penis with a lightsaber. <laughs> oh shit. Um yeah, that's about it, dude. That's that's like my main thoughts on that. I just thought it was funny. I thought I'd go off on a tangent when it came to the uh to the lightsaber agenda. Anyone that's familiar with uh, a lot of the Melvin lore lights yeah yellow lightsaber agenda i think is about two years ago when that came out that was one of the first videos of his that i ever saw so all right and then we have okay so we have the george lucas shareholder backing article post we could get into that if you guys want let's check out the chat i still got 80 you here dude appreciate it guys i know it's a work night dude really appreciate everyone being here supporting not impressed with the High Republic artwork, period. Yeah, yeah, the artwork. And that's my biggest gripe masquerade with X-Men 97, you know, is that fucking artwork to me is horrendous. I think they should have done a much better job. I don't like the way the animation is, uh, but I'll get into that review here in a little bit. Uh, can anyone write Ahsoka better than Dave Filoni? I'm, I'm sh- wait, I, I'm sure plotting a rewrite of her character. Yeah, well, I mean, they wrote a book on Ahsoka, and it was better than Dave Filoni's writing. It actually had her doing some witty shit, working with other people, and then they retconned it all. <laughs> so, Jaden Core had a yellow saber, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in, um, it's Cross Current, I think, it's the second book, or maybe that's the first book. No, that's the second one, I think. And then Riptide. Riptide's the one with him on the cover with the yellow saber. I fucking, I thought I had it, dude. I, I have it saved. I just didn't get the pictures up in time. So when I do my video and actually cut a video of this shit, I'll fucking get all the pictures in of all the High Republic motherfuckers and all the, you know, the EU yellow light slave or saber slingers. Who's taking a saber to their giant <laughs> Nobody pilgrim. I'm joking around. Like, have you ever heard the story of Darth Plagueis? He cut off his own wiener so he could be transgender. Uh, let's see, Jaden Core and my head cannon the lights uh, is incredibly rare among the yeah. That, a lot of that started from Kotor lore for sure, dude. Masquerade. Uh, Dagan can use the Force to grow another arm. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, it's weird. The Force is like all over the place with these people. That's the most intimidating Jedi moment. What do you mean, purist? <laughs> Something's happened to the Jedi. I just don't know what. Uh, pantry protector reading Plagueis right now very good so far cool yeah I did like four videos so far of um 
the Plague is Novel. I did the intro and the first four chapters. I got I got to get back around to that man, but that was taking like lots of time, and then people come, my viewership kind of fell off on it, and I just I had to try different things out. Uh, but I am gonna revisit that. Uh, but I did a fun little game. So like when um, <clears throat> when I was getting ready to start my channel and do all that with the Plagueis thing, I think I was watching like uh, Raging Rhino stream, and uh, and I I noticed the same shit when I was watching Andor about they don't have any fucking like. Um, you know, aliens or anything. And then he brought that shit up. And then it made me think, like, as I started reading Plagueis again to, to start my channel, I was rereading it. And then I'm like, holy fuck, man, there's like all these aliens just in like the first like three chapters alone. So that gave me the idea. So I got a little bell counter that goes off. So every time they go to or reference a planet, um, and then whenever there's a new species, I ring a bell and have a number pop up on the fucking screen because I was trying to highlight like, this is what real Star Wars does. Now, granted, obviously, Plagueis is, like, towards the end of the EU. They got all kinds of lore and shit. But, I mean, for the most part, they're not always on the same planets and all that. Oh, that's another thing with this trailer. Uh, lots of desert planets and lots of fucking islands. There's, like, little islands and desert planets everywhere in Disney Star Wars. And then there's wannabe Coruscant-looking places. And that's about it, dude. Every now and then you get, like, a jungle planet. But, anyways. All right. So, let's see here. Uh, okay, yeah, so the George news. Okay, so first of all, and again, you know, whatever. George Lucas can do whatever the fuck he wants to do with his money, dude. I'm never going to tell somebody what else they can do with their own money. Um, but, I mean, George, politically, man, I don't, you know, I, I've always think he's more of like a classical liberal type. He's not like freaking <clears throat> this hardcore radical leftist. But at the same time, like, he's like of that camp and he's old school. So he's like, I got to vote for my party and all that shit. But let's not forget, like, everybody's like, oh, yeah, George, just he's totally backing Disney. I think he's just backing his investment for his family. He's old as fuck. D Disney's considered a blue chip stock, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, he could move it around and all that, but he got a shitload of the stocks, probably at a discounted rate as part of his fucking, his buy-in or, like, you know, his buy-in when they sold the company because a lot of it was mostly shares and then cash or however they did it. Uh, but anyways, but George also, I mean, he's 80. You know what I'm saying? And, and we all know there's there's 80-year-old Biden Let's and there's 80-year-old This is 2 years ago. Hold on a second, guys. Let's wait. Have a good night, Mr. Lucas. Have a good night, Mr. Lucas. Feel better. Now, obviously, George is, is a fucking elderly. It could have just been a bad day. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. Um, but I do know that I did watch the same type of shit happen to Stan Lee. And they were carting Stan Lee around everywhere, dude. And they were having him get fucking do autograph signings, like thousands of autographs a day and shit like that. And this is during a time when I also remember reading reports that he was having trouble finishing his cameo appearances and having to um, film them in sections and all that. And anyone who knows and seems like MCU movies know that his cameo appearances weren't that long. So, you know, they used and abused fucking Stan Lee until he fucking died, man. You know, so I and I'm not saying that's what's happening here with George. Uh, yeah, that is 2000. The date was on it, Steve. I think that was like um, February, uh, April of 22. Now, that being said, you know, George is speaking fine and all that right here. Um, and this was you guys will remember this. This was in 2022 also, but I think it's earlier. I think it's like in like um, January or February. And again, he maybe just had a bad day. But let's not forget because everyone's like, oh, yeah, George is like totally, you know, he's he's a uh, shilling for Disney now. And he's, you know, he's accepting Disney and all that. I, I don't think so, dude. Here, I've skipped this kid's name because, you know, we don't need to glorify his name or all that. But here's his question and George's answer. I probably won't do the full answer because he starts going off onto some other stuff. But here, we'll re-listen to this. I know you guys have probably all seen it. but That was great. And I really like Star Wars. So my question for you is, uh, sorry, the world has changed so much since the first Star Wars movie. How do you think the changes in the fights for racial justice will impact the Star Wars universe going forward? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've, I've kind of lost control of Star Wars, so it's going off in a different path than what I intended. But the first six are very much mine and my philosophy. And I think that philosophy uh, sort of goes beyond um, 
any particular time because it's based on history, it's based on philosophy, it's based it's based on a lot of things. And uh, you know, the 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 first three basically tell you how a a democracy turns into a dictatorship, and you end up with a tyrant, the emperor. Uh, it's a very important now. Uh, where we are now in our political history. Um, the other part... And even that, <clears throat> whatever way he votes, the way he answers that, he doesn't say, yeah, because cause actually I think Biden's in power. Two, yeah, two years ago, Biden's in power, not Trump. <laughs> but he's not saying I'm a Trump supporter or I'm a Biden. It doesn't matter because the way he answers it is in a in general way that you got to be careful about power and this, this, that, and the other. Um, so that's the way that he's always kind of answered. It's kind of like Michael Jordan said, uh, Republicans buy shoes too. He never was really boisterous about his like political opinions and stuff. And again, I think George is more of a traditional, you know, liberal that I think kind of had some conservative. He's obviously a big capitalist, but um, here I'll let, we'll let this go a little bit longer just in case anybody hasn't seen this one. But part was that in there, it's like, um, I purposely, the, all of the various colors and shapes of the aliens and everything that live in that world, um, it's a normal situation. There's no real discrimination. The only discrimination is against robots. And we haven't really uh, reached that period yet. And uh, I'm sure the robots will be able to overcome it uh, because they don't have the same feelings. Uh, so, um, but it really shows you in terms of the way the politics are and the way things are, uh, you know, how to fight those ideas. And a lot of it really has to do with, um, with uh, overcoming fear. You know, the thing that brought that, and also the, the movies, you know, the, the uh, thing with Anakin is that he, he um, started out a great kid. He was very compassionate. Uh, and um, so the issue was, is how did he turn bad? How did he go to the dark side? And he went to the dark side by, uh, the, the Jedis are not supposed to have attachments. They can, they can love people, they can do it, but they can't attach. That's the problem when you get in the, uh, in the world of fear. Once you're attached to something, then you become afraid of losing it. And when you became afraid of losing it, then you turn to the dark side and you want to hold on to it. And that's what uh, Anakin's issue was ultimately, is he wanted to hold on to his wife, who he knew he had a premonition that she was going to die. He didn't know how to stop it. So he went to the dark side to find, in, in mythology and everything, they go to Hades and you talk to the devil and the devil says, this is what you do. And basically you sell your soul to the devil. When you do that, then you're afraid and you're on the dark side and you fall off the, the, the golden path of compassion because you are greedy. Marvel tangent, Johnny Blaze sold his soul to Mephisto. All right, so there's that. Yeah, there's more. You guys can check this. It's Melody Hobson, George Lucas, virtual speaker interview. When it cuts out, that's actually their webcam, not me. Um, and then, of course, you know, we all know the Charlie And they Rose. said, we want to make something for the fans. So I said, all I wanted to do was tell a story of what happened. You know, it started here and it went there. And it's all about generations. And it's about, you know, the issues of fathers and sons and grandfathers. And it's a family soap opera. I mean, ultimately. I mean, space, we call it space, space opera. But it, people don't realize it's actually a soap opera. Yeah. And it's all about family problems. And that it's not about spaceships. So they decided they didn't want to use those stories. They decided they were going to go do their own thing, and so I decided, fine, but basically I'm not going to try to, they weren't that keen to have me involved anyway, but at the same time I said, I'm not going to, if I get in there, I'm just going to cause trouble, because they're not going to do what I want them to do, so, and I don't have the control to do that anymore, and all I would do is muck everything up. So I said, okay, I will go my way, and I'll let them go their way. And it really does come down to a, a simple rule of life which is when you break up with somebody, the first rule is no phone calls. 
The second rule, you don't go over to their house and drive by to see what they're doing. <laughs> the third one is you don't show up at their coffee shop or the thing that you're going to run in. You just say, no, gone, history, I'm moving forward. Because every time you do, and you know, we all learn this from experience, every time you do something like that, you're opening the wound again. And it just makes it harder for you. You have to put it behind you, and it's a very, very, very hard thing to do. But you have to just cut it off and say, okay, end the ball game. i got to move on. And everything in your body says, don't, you can't. And these are my kids. So All those Star Wars films. All the Star Wars films. They were your kids. Yeah, well, they are. Right? You know, I, I loved them. I created them. Um, I'm very intimately involved in them. And obviously to and sell them And you sold off them. To, I sold them to the white slavers that take these things and... And, uh, <laughs> okay, but, but I mean, but, but having said all that and having talked to you for the last... All right, you guys are all familiar with that, I'm sure. <clears throat> Most Star Wars fans are. All right, and I, I missed it. I already dropped it down. I could look it up, but I'm not going to. We were also talking about in Discord the other day um, how Star Wars was made for 12-year-old 12, uh, 12 boys. That's his, George's target audience. Now, obviously, the story is, is transcendent. It's generational. It's timeless. And its messages and whatnot, uh, but somebody's like, "Oh wait, no!" But in this other thing, he said, "Well, in this same interview, the one with his wife uh, from two years ago um, at the shit." Well, I had it written down. I I must have it on a different paper. Um, it was around the tw I think around the twelve or the eighteen minute mark or whatever. She brings up, oh yeah, and you made Star Wars for eleven year old boys. He goes, no, actually, I made it for twelve year old boys. And he gets into fuck, man. I wish I had it now because he gets into um, the fact that twelve years old that's that transitional age where you're transitioning from a uh, from a child into an adult and shit. You know, you may not fully be a de an adult. Uh, your brain's not fully developed like an adult, um, but you're at that transitional period in life um, that you're going to start doing adult things and start looking at the world differently and this, this, and that. And that's why he's targeting that age group as well. Obviously, they, you know, 12-year-old boys played with action figures and shit back then too, you know. Um, and all that good stuff. But yeah, I, I found that was interesting as well. Fuck, I wish I would have kept it up and I wish I would have properly marked down the time segment on that. Uh, but yeah, so, um, okay, cool. <clears throat> so we're good on that. There's the George news. Um, and then we got, okay, so I'm going to do Rebel Moon Part 2 trailer. I'm going to hold off on that here for a minute. Let's see, X-Men reboot, artists and writers. I'm kind of looking at my time because I'm figuring out my family's home now, so I don't think I'm going to get away with doing a two-hour and 45-minute stream tonight. So let's, I'm going to get into the thumbnail. Spring is here, the misogyny stream. Plus X Men '97 and Woke Light trailer. So we hit Woke Light. We got to hit X Men '97. Uh, I hope you guys, you guys like the thumbnail or what? So these are, if you guys didn't know, the uh, Marvel swimsuit issues. They were in the '90s. Very unique, cool thing they did in the '90s. Uh, Psylocke over here on the right. I had like freaking eight different photos of her that I wanted to pick out because she that she's the most consistent part of that swimsuit issue. Rogue looking great here. Rogue was hit, or I think she was kind of whatever in the fourth one. And then Storm's always pretty decent. And then also um, Mary Jane Watson, man. She was, uh, she was she makes a lot of fucking good appearances in all these, too. But they did the guys, too, right? They did, hey, they had the fucking dudes and Speedos and all that shit, too. So they were looking out for the women. But basically, this shit is like a spoof off of Sports Illustrated. Um, so here we go. Let me, uh, let me do this. Let me bring up my shared screen again. And I'll kind of go through this. Boom. So we're done with Woke Alive. Okay, here we go. So it started out as the Marvel Illustrated Swimsuit issue. There's was only one of it, so it was 91. And then it changed over to, like, Marvel Swimsuit Unlimited or some shit. And it that went on for, like, 92, 93, 94, 95. Uh, and I was a 12-year-old. Well, actually, well, I so I missed this one. I think I was collecting comics, but I don't think I got the first. My first issue was the 92. So I was, like, an 11, almost 12-year-old boy. So, you know, it's like a perfect age... Uh, like uh, George is saying, that's when you're transitioning and starting to become a, you know, not as much of a kid, more of a grown up. Um, so again, all right, the name of the stream says it all. I mean, we live in a time where gender confusion, 
hormone blockers, androgyny, sex change therapy are trying to be pushed as social norms. Well, now that spring is here and the weather is warming up, I thought the only appropriate thing to do is to spread my toxic masculinity through the interwebs and share with you more of the based Marvel comics that I grew up on. Now, these comics, like I said, range from 1991 to 1995, which puts them right around ages 10 to 14 for me, a fitting time for a boy entering his teens. Uh, even more fitting that I cover it now due to the times that we live in. I'm talking about what was originally coined Marvel Illustrated, the swimsuit issue, number one. It was rebranded in 92 as Marvel Swimsuit Special number one, and then it continued on into Special number two. Uh, I can only imagine how triggered these comics, their covers, and their premise make SJWs feel these days. I guess I'll uh, find out my common session <laughs> later on or when I make my videos. Uh, I'm sure I'll hear some of the same stereotypical reaction that haters of comic books, especially haters of male comic book readers, uh, have used over the decade now. Oh my gosh, how misogynistic. Or, real women don't have those body proportions. Looks aren't everything. I'm happy the way I am. I'll kind of go back over these after. I'm just going to skim through as I'm uh, doing my spiel here. Uh, but basically... That's all fine and dandy, you know? But let's be real here. It's definitely something you should aspire to. That's right, I said it. Nobody should be aspiring to be an androgynous, gender-confused, body-positivity-type person. And I say this as a middle-aged, overweight, out-of-shape man. Oh my gosh. Yep, I got a family. I got kids to support. I got a job I work, long hours. Um, and, you know, I'm using my up-and-coming uh, YouTube channel. And I'm using my and investing my free time and hours upon hours of my spare time into creating for my YouTube channel. But that's no excuse. That's no reason not to inspire to get into shape like Henry Cavill or Chris Hemsworth or shit, just some middle-of-the-road dude, you know, that's in decent shape. Uh, now I'm gonna now I'm gonna generalize here. So obviously, if the shoe fits, great. If it doesn't, don't get your panties in a bunch. And I know this may be a bit controversial, but there's a big difference between men and women: tastes, likes and dislikes, biological differences, maternal and paternal instincts, different essential hormones and levels of those hormones. Uh, YouTube disclosure, I'm not a scientist or a biologist, just some above average IQ uh, individual with a thing called life experience. A big difference between men and women and a majority uh, is that a majority of women, especially modern age feminist variety, uh, they tend to, um, <clears throat> especially those also that are the I hate comics or let's change comics uh, for us type, the it's not fair, why should I have to compete with that, it's not realistic, that's like the common thing that you'll hear from those people. Whereas with a dude, especially a young dude, right, um, it's like, hey, what do I got to do to get yoked like that? And again, I'm just generalizing. Nowadays, it's, it's again, like, like, hey, let's make excuses and promote body diversity so people don't have hurt feelings. Or two, I want to be inclusive. Well, you know what? That song sends the wrong message because at the end of the day, no matter what, when people actually look good and, 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 and are in good shape, you know, they tend to fucking live more healthy lives. Um, at the end of the day, comic books, especially back in the 90s, were generally geared for a target audience of like 12 to 30-year-olds, primarily males. Uh, that's, again, not to say older people and women didn't and don't collect comics. But there is a reason, well, there's many reasons, <laughs> that the comic industry has been shrinking. And regardless, whether it be a youngster or a young adult or somebody reaching middle age, having people to aspire to be physically fit and looking good shouldn't be a controversial thing. People who look fit generally are fit, and they tend to live longer lives than people that are morbidly obese. You know, the fact that X-Men 97's creative team has openly admitted that they uh, intentionally androgenize the female characters for body positivity or to stay relevant is ridiculous and just downright disgusting. And, and we've seen not only in comic book movies, but most of Hollywood in general, too. It's this, this thing where they want to make women not look like women and, you know, and then, you know, emasculate men. It's just, it's just weird, dude. So again, it's time to deep dive into some Marvel comics where the men are distinctly men 
and women are definitely women. These comics were created in a time where creativity and humor still flourished in our society. I mean, Marvel's swimsuit issues are a parody of Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues, which back in the 90s were flying off the shelves. Uh, not sure what their numbers look like anymore. Um, from, from what I hear, they're probably not doing too well because they got like all different kind of weird shit going on. Uh, they also included Olympic events in the first issue, which we'll get into, which is interesting and funny when you look at the events and the superheroes that competed in them and their power sets. Uh, another cool thing they did uh, was set each annual issue in like a different setting. So the first one is in um, the Savage Land. I think portions of it are like in Atlantis or whatever. Um, but then there's also the second issue, which is in Wakanda. Uh, third issue is based in um, uh, Monster Island. Uh, fourth issue on the moon. And then the final issue was in Madripoor. Again, just creative stuff. And I mean, that's, that's the thing. The 80s and the 90s is just like a, an overabundance of creativity. Like, yeah, they didn't have big ass like budgets and all their sci-fi movies and shit. But like if you look up like sci-fi or horror stuff from back then, you'll find like the most creative storylines. It's just it's just the way it was back then. Same thing with video games. They had all different kinds of, you know, creative things they were doing with the limited technology. Uh, some watching this might say, but Justin, you were just complaining and, and have been complaining about the Hellfire Gala. How's that any different? Well, again, those are just um, these are just annual one-off comics that they did as a parody and to have some fun. And, uh, and also, they were done to celebrate masculinity and femininity of characters. Um, they weren't interwoven into long, drawn-out storylines that didn't really f uh, fit the original feel and concept of the X-Men characters and their stories or their arcs in the universe. Unfortunately, that's a big problem with the X-Men. Instead of staying with a long, consist consistent, established, progressing storyline of the 70s through the 90s, the Claremont era... Uh, they've undergone reboot after reboot after reboot, um, all because they said, oh, it's too hard to tell new stories using these same storylines. And then they retcon continuity and they retcon and they retcon and then they do an origin on top of an origin and they do even more of an origin. And again, sometimes that could be to the benefit of certain characters not previously fleshed out. But many times it causes more confusion, oversaturation of the character's origins, leaving no mystery or ending up, you know, decades of character uh, development and key character elements. Uh, these comics are just one example, again, of how creative and unique everything was in the 90s and 80s as well. Uh, we've entered a time that creativity has been stifled by political correctness and laziness and following templates and copycat safeness. All right. You guys still there? I gotta fucking get some water, dude. The testosterone runs through the pit. Yeah. <laughs> if Lizzo is beautiful. Oh, okay, yeah. Space movie that came out in the 90s. Yeah, you know what? Um, Event Horizon is a dope one from the 90s. I did uh, with my buddies uh, Jeff and Kevin over at Sons and Shadows. We did an Event Horizon review. That was a fucking dope horror movie back in the day. Okay, yeah. Here, let me. So let me go through the. Con I was trying to kind of scroll through it as I'm doing my thing, but then I can't, I can't walk and chew gum, I guess. Here, let's see. Glad you're here, Scourge, man. Appreciate it. I know it's late as fuck, dude. And I, I appreciate everybody that's here late. I know it's a pain in the ass. So, yeah. So, they did cool things like the Olympic shit. Um, and then we have, like, um, you know, they, they have ads. Like, funny ads and shit. This kind of reminiscent of the Flintstones to me. It's like the Fantastic Four right here. I guess here, let's we'll go back up to the top real quick. Fuck it. Um, is she Hulk? Back when she wasn't, like, a talking shit and trying to troll fans right this is when uh the good days of she hulk and so yeah you got wolverine and the ads for macho i won't get too into detail you guys can check these out but um but yeah. speed stick deodorant macho they got ones for quicksilver i think like shoes that's so that's mary jane watson dude so definitely not uh kirsten dunce right there huh uh, and then Psylocke. So this one almost made it, but this is, again, older, so it was a little more desaturated and all that. I think the Psylocke I picked was a, was a winner, but this is a nice-looking swimwear for Psylocke. Um, yeah, and then it talks about, okay, boxing, talks about Matt Murdock, wrestling. They're talking about the Hulk and, and Ben Grimm, uh, Boys and Girls of Summer, so that's, like, all the actual stuff. Uh, Rocking in the Free World and Fun Games talks about, like, their Olympic events. In the Savage Land, it gives this whole fucking like thing, like backstory of it and all that. 
you got Wonder Man, and then we got Tony Stark. There's like a whole article on him. And then you see Tony Stark, you'll see in these, he's got like fucking five chicks with him all the time. See, in the MCU, they got him in Pepper Potts Fall in Love and all that, which, you know, again, that's a that's an okay adaptation to do that. But Tony Stark in the comics was just a millionaire playboy, dude. He was, he was just hanging out with all kinds of chicks. Um, there's Simon Williams, the movie star. That's why everybody thought Ralph Boner was, uh, was Simon Williams or Quicksilver. You know, version of one of them uh super olympics okay so boom in australia is down under where what would it, oh if australia is down under what would antarctica be because they're in the savage land right um and then it has all that so then it has track and field so we got a thousand meter dash makari of the eternals oh look makari of the eternals is a fucking white dude what do you know you guys probably didn't know that if you watched the eternals movie uh quicksilver right here in second and then super sabre in third all right, and then we have 800-meter uh, hurdles and high jump. Long shot for the win. Uh, Beast coming in second. Frogman third. Toad fourth. Speedball of the New Warriors fifth. Uh, I'm talking about gymnastics and shit. Okay, Matt Horse, Bars Slalom. We have Nightcrawler in first. Black Panther second. Tigra or Tigra. Spider-Man, Wolf's Bane. Um, affiliation. Oh, and then it tells you their group or their whatever weightlifting thor odin son baby for the win that's right that's right thor comes in first hercules in second hulk and uh, hulk tied in second with hercules wonder man in third ben grim thing fourth with namor she hulk in fifth what you mean they don't have she hulk outlifting the incredible hulk that's amazing colossus and sasquatch tied in sixth power man number seven all right swimming submariner of course you know he's gonna win uh namorita is his lady and comes in second triton stingray andromeda uh synchronized swimming multiple man because <laughs> he just splits into a bunch of fucking people so it's easy for him to coordinate uh, uh diathlon nick fury diathlon all performance levels and scores da -da 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 -da. Uh, this is white nick fury also he gets the award uh before he got race swapped silver sable in second Paladin third, Cable fourth. All right, skiing. Super giant alpine freestyle slalom, North Star number one, Makari two, Silver Sable three, Daredevil number four, figure skating, dance compulsory, uh, Dagger from Cloak and Dagger number one, Dazzler number two, Shadow Cat, Silver Surfer, speed skating, Iceman, you know, makes his own skates, uh, Blizzard in custody of Anthony Stark came in second. Bob Sledding, Hulk and Rick Jones. Old school comic fans know Rick Jones. Thing in the Torch, number two, She Hulk and Hercules, Colossus and Longshot. Here's another ad, Ultra X. It's about like doing like, uh, yeah, it's a shampoo. Uh, Frizzy Beast versus using Ultra X Beast. Looking nice and slick, right? No Prisoners Workout. They got an ad about She Hulk, about working out. Silver Surfer, looking like a G. Boom, boom, boom. So, okay, here we got Lila Cheney. So, Lila Cheney's a famous singer in the Marvel Universe that was around back then. And then her and Dazzler doing a duet. And you'll see later on, there's Lila and her group. And then you got Peter and MJ dancing. And at the end of the concert, we got Tony Stark hanging out with Dazzler and Lila. Allison Blair, if you didn't know, is Dazzler. We got um, Kazar with Shaun of the She-Devil and Zabu. She-Hulk, Lorna Dane, Polaris. There we go. All right, so let's get into this now. We got nice-looking Storm right here in the Savage Land flying around with the pterodactyls. There's Psylocke again. They have like, the little ad things they put are funny, too. Wet or dry, Psylocke's the catch of the day. Well suited for snorkeling, fishing, or just turning heads. Uh, right here we got, oh, Howard the Duck, dude. And then the chick, I can't remember the girl's name, dude. Um, Bev, Bev, Beverly, yeah. That, Howard the Duck, produced by George Lucas. What do you know? I love the movie, dude. It's trash, but it's great. There's MJ, Mary Jane Watson right there. This was actually a fold-out. She was like the fold-out part centerpiece whatever you call it 
Ah, we've got a time watch fucking ad here. Mr. Fantastic and uh, Galactus and Doom and the Mole Man. Chronex watches. Your time may run out before it does. Here's the dudes and fucking swim shorts. Boomer. Uh, a boom boom. They turned her into Boomer, but Boom Boom's the OG name from the X-Force. Cable right here. So Cable's wearing shorts, but later on it says Cable wouldn't dress because they tried to put him in a thong. He's like, fuck that. He's posing with his guns and shit and all fucking normal. Here's Captain America with uh, Diamondback. Namor and Namorita. She-Hulk with Wasp. Yeah, here's Cable. They tried to throw him in this thong. He's like, fuck that, dude. I got my guns. And then we got Jubilee and um, Boom Boom again. Okay, here's Quicksilver from New York to L.A. in less than four hours. And he did it in our sneakers. <laughs> so it's like it's it's like poking fun at like freaking, um, you know, advertising shit back then. And then here we go. We got Storm, Rogue, Psylocke, and Dazzler. And Jean Grey. Yeah, so that's Storm, Jean, and Rogue right there. See, Rogue's looking good in lots of these. And then we got Rachel Summers. And there's Psylocke. And I think that's, is that name Marita? And that's Kitty Pride. Thor and Sif. Lady Sif. And then Loki. Not an outfit, obviously, here. Creeping around. Yeah, we got a good villain spread right here. We got Diamondback, Asp, Enchantress. Black Cat and Emma Frost. Now, Emma Frost is like, I think her next issue is not good at all. And then there's Viper. And then we got Wonder Man. And there's Tigra. Hercules uh, working out with the whole damn set right here. Atomy, Atomy Flex. Our equipment is as tough as they are. First Family, we got Franklin Richards. Sue Storm, Reed Richards, Ben Grimm, and Johnny Storm. Flame on. Then they did a tug of war thing. So we got Hawkeye, Mockingbird. They're married in the comics. Uh, U.S. Agent. And, um, oh, who is that? Is that Frank Castle? Uh, and then we have Black Widow, Iron Man. And then on this side, we got Captain America, She Hulk, Thor, and Hercules. Taking all the rest of them on. <clears throat> and that's, uh, what's it called? Searcy in the Eternals. And here we got Medusa and Crystal from the Inhumans. Crystal's still like a younger kid right here. Crystal goes on and marries Quicksilver and has a kid. Um, and that causes like a dichotomy with the Inhumans and the X-Men. And then we got um, Scarlet Witch. There's the wrestling thing on Ben Grimm, Prize Fighter's son, Matt Murdock, there's Namor. Ta oh, talking about cleaning up the environment and shit. Before and after Thor, Thor, like Thor, Thor shaving off his beard. Yeah, it's a fucking flick disposables. <laughs> By Odin's beard, what is this? All right, so that's the end of that one, dude. I'll fucking try, I'll kind of zoom through, I'll just focus. That, that one's more, um... With the ads and all that. Like, they don't go, like, that far on the other ones. I think it's more just a thing after that. Let's see. Marvel. Sorcery Special. Boom. Yeah, so the next one's on... Uh, Mad for Madripo. Oh, that's the fourth one. Shit. I actually didn't like the fourth one as much. They have, like, Venom in it. I think he's, like, wearing... Uh, Spider-Man swim trunks or some shit. It's funny. Boom. All right, so you guys are still here. Oh, yeah, nice. Is that Tigra flirting with somebody? Oh, oh yeah, we got a good appearance here in this next one, too. What's up, Melissa Lord George? Produce the movie. Yep, Howard the Duck. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you guys didn't know that? Yeah, deep cut, man. Another George Lucas special. Howard the fucking Duck, bro. <laughs> embarrassing i used to have fucking nightmares not of howard the duck but of the supreme fucking overlord dude because i think i was like what 
five or six when that movie came out and I loved it and shit. And I loved his fucking smart ass attitude and Leia Thompson was hot, but fucking yeah, dude, like the guy fucking that turns into the Supreme Overlord and the monsters, even though the CGI is so shit, I'd have like fucking bad dreams as a kid from that fucking movie. My buddies used to fucking meme me at work when I said that. Uh, he kind of looked like Gollum, so I fucked with him back. But Thor beats Hulk. Oh yeah, Pilgrim. Thor's stronger than Hulk, dude, for sure. I mean, unless you, unless you get Hulk mad and fucking pissed him off and all that. But yeah, no, Thor's generally stronger, dude. Um, okay, let's see. Damn, these fucking ads are so annoying. Okay, Marvel swimsuit special. Take a Wakanda wild side. A Wakanda wild side. <laughs> There's Storm, the freaking uh, parakeet or a fucking parrot. A row row. That's Mark Silvestri right there. What does Pun Punisher use when he has cockroaches? Death con. <laughs> so they do still have the ads. And they have some of that shit. Here's a watcher. Wearing some ozones. That's funny. There's T'Challa and Monica Lynn. And here's like a big dinner party. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Valstog lost 10 pounds using Super Slim Down. That's funny. All right. That's uh, MJ with Spider Man. Probably her least flattering out of all her other uh, outfits of all these series. Uh, okay, so here's Hulk and uh, Betsy or Betty Banner, sorry, and then we got Rick Jones, and then Marlo Chandler, Chandler, Rick Jones's girl. Okay, and we got Domino right here, and that's Boom Boom. Oh no, Val Cooper. Sorry, so that's Val Cooper. She's like the liaison for X Factor. Uh, Namorita. Namor's girl. Here's Thor Odin's son. Got the hair tied back. <laughs> uh, Black Widow. All right. Now, funny here. Okay. There's Bobby Drake Iceman, right? And then what do we talk about in the, the lore of Iceman? Opal. Storm. Jean. And Opals, Iceman's girlfriend up there, right? And then we got Colossus, Cyclops, Iceman, Gambit, Wolverine, fucking like whatever dudes. And then Storm and Psylocke over here. And Angel flying around. All right, and then here's She-Hulk. All the dudes gawking at She-Hulk from the pool. It's funny. Here's Mr. Fantastic. He's busy fucking studying giraffes and shit because that's the way Reed is while everyone else is fucking around. Franklin, Johnny, what the hell's uh, others oh, thing? He's swimming with hippopotamuses. Uh, this is uh, Nomad. And then we have Megan. Is this um, Guardian? Wasp. Aurora. And here's Psylocke. This one almost made the cut, too. I was having trouble finding one that was bright enough, though. Psylocke. Psylocke was one of my favorites growing up, even though she was a little smaller smaller role in the, uh, the X-Men blue team. <clears throat> and then Multiple Man. Holding up Val Cooper for X, X Factor. And there's Rachel the Phoenix. And this is... Uh, Johnny Blaze when he becomes just Blaze and then we got Danny Ketch Ghost Rider so Ghost Rider and Blaze Polaris Magneto's other daughter and we got Excalibur right here so we got Rachel Kitty Pride um, Megan oh shit Captain Britain and then Feral in her normal or Wolf's, Wolf's Bane. Yeah, Feral's on fucking X Factor. Um, and then here is uh, Quasar. He has like universe fucking briefs. And there's Circe from the Internals. Cable. He's again just bringing all his guns. Now, eventually they get him in a Speedo, I think in like the fourth issue or third. They should have just kept it a meme and had Cable never fucking 
dress up and sh- or like fucking wear a bathing suit. Captain America. There's Tigra and Black Cat and Tiger Tiger. And then we got Gambit, Bishop, and Cyclops. And we got Diamondback and Viper. Not digging that Viper much. Beast, Sasquatch, Wolverine, Nick Fury, Iron Man, Black Panther, and Daredevil. Fucking Kingpin and Doctor Doom. <laughs> Dr. Doom with a blow-up doll. (laughs) There's Magneto. There's Rogue. Probably one of her better ones. They didn't um, desexualize her in this. Namor. Colossus. Rogue. She-Hulk. Strong guy. One of my least favorite Marvel characters. Wasp. Cutting up some fucking robots. Whole fucking shit up. Oh, it's insurance commercial. This whole fucks up shit. <laughs> awesome. All right. It's getting late. You guys want me to go through the other ones real quick, or do you want me to get into my X Men 97 review? You guys let me know in the chat. I'll start going through this one right now. Val Cooper is multiple man's love interest. Uh, I'm not sure, man. I don't. I didn't read a lot of X Factor during that time. Masquerade. I would read X Factor, like if it was in a crossover, because back that was like the time of a lot of crossovers and shit. So I'd read X Factor like during crossovers events, like uh, Fatal Attractions or Executioner Song and stuff like that, uh, or like Age of Apocalypse. But I wasn't like constantly just buying X Factor. I I was more of an X Force guy. Um, let's see here. Fuck Norris. My brother and I saw Howard the Duck at the theater. Yeah, yeah, me too, dude. Yep. Fucking classic, dude. It's one of those, like, shitty movies that you like, you know? It's like, it's cool. All right, so now they're on Monster Island. So here's Rogue again on the cover. And then we got, um, another ad here. Pip the Troll, Drax, Adam Warlock, Moon Dragon, another lesbian character, Moon Dragon, that they didn't have to sexuality swap. Woo, they were doing that back then. And then there's Gamora. You'll see Gamora. She looks like a, a boss in this. Okay, let's see. Okay, here's Rogue, Wolverine. This is just normal on Monster Island. They're all showing up. Cloak and Dagger. Electra, Matt Murdock in the back, uh, Scarlet Witch and Clea, Doctor Strange's uh, love interest, uh, and then we got Silver Sable, I got some Silver Sable comics, not too many, but I collected a couple of them because they had some cool covers, uh, Damian Hellstrom, and this is uh, the second iteration of Spider-Woman, Julia Carpenter, the one that Sidney Sweeney was playing. Uh, and then Jean Grey. Definitely not looking like pregnant Jean in the X-Men 97. Thor and Sif. New Warriors. Domino and Cable. Yep, see, they got Cable in a Speedo already. They should have memed it longer. Morbius. It's Morbin time. Bunch of zombies following him around. <laughs> There's Mary Jane Watson again. And then Aunt May. <laughs> That's hilarious, dude. Tigra. There's Gamora. And then we got Polaris. Magneto's other daughter. Black Widow, She-Hulk, and Psylocke. (laughs) There's Danny Ketch, Ghost Rider. And then Aurora, North Star from Alpha Flight. 
Excalibur, so that's Megan, Kitty Pride, Nightcrawler. He went and bamped over here and got him some hot dogs. Captain Britain. There's uh, Phoenix, Rachel, Betty Banner, and Hulk. Jubilee and Wolverine. Persuasion. Colossus. And then Medusa of the Inhumans. Just sporting her hair. And that's Black Bolt, King of the Inhumans. Sue Storm. Reed Richards. Thing. Not sure where her torch is at. Storm. Looking like a goddess. Doc Sampson. He was on X Factor for a little bit. Punisher. <laughs> um, oh, I think this is Miguel O'Hara. Spider-Man 2099 and his girl. Yep. Lila. Oh, she's the hologram. Lila. That's right. Is that what they call it in the Spider-Man No Way Home movie? Is she called Lila? I wonder if that's like a deep cut reference they did that I never thought of. Uh, Typhoid Mary, Daredevil villain. Um, oh, Quasar. Black Cat. Bishop. And there's Val Cooper again. Val Cooper's on a lot of the uh, last pages. All right, I was able to jam through that one a little quicker. I know it's getting kind of late. All right. Kind of wish Petro and Petro and Wanda be Ma Magneto's kids and Polaris ended up. Yeah, you know what? They still are his kids, man. Like, so that's <laughs> my origins. So Wolverine and Magneto, I've been having issues because I'm like cutting off different parts because I'm not like, yeah. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm almost done with uh, Magneto and almost a little less done with Wolverine. But I think Wolverine, I'm just going through Weapon X. I'm not going all the way through the backstory. They, well, the more they start doing that, they unlock all the freaking um, the mystery of their origins. And that's the thing. Like Wolverine and Magneto both went a long time without their origin story told. They don't need to have every moment of their life uncovered. Uh, body swap story, yes. Psylocke got confusing with the whole, yeah, Quanon and Betsy Braddock. Yeah, dude, that was a Fabian Nicesa story uh, after Claremont left. Um, I liked it. I thought it was cool, but yeah, it is It is very complicated. Fuck Morris, that's for sure. But that's like, like an intriguing character they could actually do a movie on and actually have a plot and some shit going on. They could make it a whole different type of a Marvel movie where it's like a fucking, um, uh, almost like a Christopher Nolan, like, uh, dude, what the hell's the name of that movie, dude? One of his first, Memento, almost like a movie type like that, where it's like some mystery shit that's going on with the body swap, and they could make a real complex story just out of her, and then the whole ninja background, her with the Mandarin originally, Quanon and all that. Yeah, they could definitely do some cool shit with that. Um, anyways, okay. Okay, here we go, number three. We'll just let the misogyny keep flowing. Um, Mjolnir. Okay, so here's Namor and Namorita. They're on the moon now. Come to the moon and explore heavenly bodies guaranteed to send you into orbit. Um, my computer's like fucking up on me now. Let me do this. Let's pop that down. Mjolnir. Handyman tools. <laughs> There's Adam Warlock, the Watcher. There's the whole inhuman family. Typhoid Mary. Thing. Torch. Frankie Ray Nova. One of my first videos, right? Frankie Ray and um, one of my first live streams. Um, Black Widow. Natasha Romanov. This is probably her best appearance. Got Wolverine. Uh, this is Electra, kind of a weird version. <clears throat> Long shot. Oh, bullseye. G. 
Jubilee, Angel, Iceman, um, Beast, and Bishop. Searcy, different uniform. Uh, there's Boom Boom. Storm, and that's Forge. Her and Forge have a romance that goes on in the 80s. Captain America. Mary Jane again. Told you. She's like uh, surprisingly uh, standing out over most of them. Uh, there's Quicksilver with his with his daughter and uh, Crystal. What's her daughter's name again? She, Luna. That's right, Luna. Tony Stark. S.E. Stark Enterprises. And... Tony Stark again, or Doctor Strange here, hanging out with all of them. Thor, rock climbing on the moon. Gambit and Rogue. Not really a big fan of that one. Uh, there's She-Hulk. Oh, and Lockjaw, right? Is that Lockjaw from the Inhumans? <clears throat> uh, Scarlet Witch, Wanda. Hulk and Julia Carpenter Spider Woman again. Siren and Banshee. Moira McTaggart. Nova. Richard Ryder Nova. Oh wait, no, no, no. New Warriors. Yeah, Nova. Okay. Wasp. Probably one of her best appearances. Doc Sampson. And Polaris. Silver Sable. T'Challa. Uh, Firestar and Silhouette from the New Warriors. Colossus. Emma Frost. Eh, they could have done better with that. And then Black Cat. And Psylocke. This was a candidate, too. I think this was a runner-up on the ones I was going to use for the thumbnail. And Thor. And then we got Drax, Moon Dragon, Gamora, Pip the Troll, Adam Warlock, Jean Grey, again, and Cyclops. North Star. Wonder Man, and then I don't know who these two are. The Watcher and Silver Surfer. Boom. One more. All right. Swimsuit special number four Mad for Madripoor. Rogue and Gambit again. Typhoid Mary, Tylenaid, and we got Wolverine and Tiger Tiger, I think that is, right? She-Hulk, Venom, here we go, yeah, Venom with the Spidey trunks, <laughs> fucking hilarious, Enchantress, not Sylvie, the real Enchantress, Aurora. <clears throat> and then we got uh, Scarlet Witch. Thor. Nightmare and Roxanne. Roxanne is, I'm pretty sure that's Johnny Blaze's Roxanne, right? Nightmare being a Ghost Rider villain. Uh, Cage. Generation X and Tony Stark hanging out with all the bro all the broads. Not locked down with Pepper. <laughs> <clears throat> and then this is Silver Sable, Storm and Kitty Pride, uh, Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider. Wasp. Uh, Doctor Strange? Yeah. Iceman. 
Cyclops and Jean. I think Jean's kind of a runner-up with Mary Jane, just like consistent on these. There's Black Cat, Tigra. That's Cage. Right? Oh, Black Panther. Sorry. <clears throat> Polaris. Black Widow. Spider-Man and Mary Jane. Electra and Psylocke. Steve Rogers. Typhoid Mary. Colossus. Serpent. Firestar. Turbo. Speedball. Scarlet Spider. Psylocke. Human Torch, <laughs> good barbecue. Clea, Bishop. Oh, Bishop's got the X Men '97 haircut. Maybe that's where they got it from. And there's Betty and Hulk. North Star and Pantheon's Hector. I don't know who that is. <clears throat> Chimera, Namor. Diamondback, Doc Sampson, and Val Cooper, Cloak and Dagger, and that's it, that is the 90s, alright, Four viewers. Everybody's out of here. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Alicia Masters, I think was her name. Uh, the thing asked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alicia Masters. Yep, yep, yep. Good call on that masquerade. Johnny and Crystal never got married, did they? I thought they did. Maybe they didn't. I think they did. I know the granddaughter, Mag Magneto, goes to meet them. I think that's like during the Vision and Scarlet Witch comics, like back in the 80s. Uh, first mutant inhuman hybrid. <clears throat> Imagine if Lorelei came in the Marvel. Yeah, right. That's right. Man, it's late. 1.30. Okay, so I'm going to probably have to put Dark Force Rising on the back burner. Well, yeah, I got some X-Men news on the reboot. I guess I'll get to that too next time. All right, let's go with... I'm going to go with X-Men 97. So I was... Pleasantly surprised. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's it's going to be great and it's this, this, that, and the other. But considering all the woke shit and everything that you've seen in the, you know, the, the news and everything leading up to X-Men 97, um, I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, there's actually a story there and a plot that's actually moving forward. Now, yeah, there's definitely some... Um, you know, some messaging and stuff like that. Like in the beginning, he's like, Oh, um, I'm born that way or something like referring to being a mutant. I thought I'm like, Oh, watch Lady Gaga is going to come out singing the born that way song or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was actually the story kind of moved along the theme music. I don't know what it is exactly. They were uh, doing with the theme music because they were like, it was the theme music, but it wasn't like, it kind of like, um, it kind of just like had a different like beat or whatever. They had to change it just to change it type thing. Um, I noticed they added morph in the, like, the entrance. I don't think he was in the um, entrance on the original one. Uh, but actually, the way they used morph so far, he's morphing into other mutants that they haven't used or shown on the show. Um, and for the most part, like you know there's the scene there's a scene where he's in a bar with wolverine because wolverine's upset over gene and this this and that and, and scott thinking about maybe possibly leaving because gene's pregnant uh, but yeah i mean besides he just says you want to talk about it or something like that and then he like turns into gene and he's like fucking around with wolverine and stuff like that but honestly man like there wasn't too much like there, there wasn't any now there was a lot of exposition in the first one um, and then in the second one, they make a lot of references to like the previous series, but it's, that's kind of a good thing. That was kind of Stan Lee's formula back in the day, uh, when he was running Marvel and a lot of the writers, that was the, the premise they were supposed to operate on where, where every 
every issue is like a continuation of the other issues that you're doing. Um, but it also should be an introductory to people as, as an issue as well. Like, so you should be able to pick up a Marvel comic back in the day. That was their theory. You should be able to pick up a Marvel comic, read it, understand, and have a story that's told to you. And then obviously the readers that have been around are going to understand other parts of the story also. But you're not going to just come in as a new reader and be like lost. You know, that was always like Stan Lee's thing. Um, but yeah, so in the beginning, they they get the Robert DaCosta, which is uh, the Sunspot. You see him in like Days of Future Past and the New Mutants movie, two different iterations of him in the in the Fox Universe movies. Um, but he's like, yeah, um, apparently he's rich. He's like, you know, you know, that is right. He is rich in the comics. Uh, he's offering to like pay them off. It's Friends of Humanity. Friends of Humanity was a villain in the original X Men series, but they have like upgraded tech now. They have these like blaster freaking things that like you know transform or whatever um so like high-tech stuff and then they fucking they capture him he's like trying to bribe them they're like we don't want your money mutie you know this this and that a lot of the same x-men type themes um so and again i'm, I'm in no way saying that it ain't coming because i'm sure it is um you know the the marvel does have a track record especially on these disney plus shows where the first couple are very good and then it kind of starts to fall off a cliff or then the but you know certain shows like falcon and winter or yeah falcon and winter soldier they hit you over the head with racism shit like right off the top overtly i can't get a loan at a bank even though fucking tony stark could hook me up with some money and just shit like that um you know so then they have uh the x-men come in try to save robert DaCosta. it's like bishop storm uh they're like the ones that you know had the assault and all that now they did a lot of cool shit with cyclops too um that they didn't do as much in the in the other shows um and he kind of comes in after they get fucked up and he starts like clearing house dude and then cyclops gets fucking fucked up like a little bit and you think oh he's you know they're gonna subdue him or whatever the guy tries to take off his optic beams then he goes oh no please don't and he's like fucking with the guy and he just lets go dude and fucking you see the building explode and shit um but he does lots of cool shit now he does this thing where he like grabs robert roberto acosta and he like blasts his his optic blast on the ground and like slides back almost like a moonwalk and he's using it like to move around and shit so you know i don't know how much i i dig that um, but again, at least they're trying to do some fucking creative shit, you know, which is a lot more than I can say for like um, the Bad Batch. You know what I'm saying? I mean, the Bad Batch, I basically watched and tore, like slogged through like eight episodes and like really everything that's happened, you probably could have put in two episodes. Like it's filler on top of filler. And it basically all we've learned is M count because they don't want to talk about midichlorians because the M word's bad in Star Wars, George Lucas midichlorian prequel. People don't like it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then it's just Omega. Omega's the key to everything and this, this, and that. And then you got freaking clones like bitching at each other like they're married couples and just like there's not, there's nothing really. And then there's filler. We got to go here and do this. This new episode, they go somewhere to do something to find out, hey, I'll try to get you the information later on and I'll reach back out to you after they do a fucking job for somebody where they think they're obtaining this information so it's like dude it's just like where's the actual plot going this show actually has shit going on the plot's moving along uh there's actually a massive cliffhanger at the end of the second episode uh, i don't know if i should do spoiler free and then get into spoilers and i'm not telling you everybody go out go sub and get freaking a subscription to disney plus and this this that and the other again it could end up being a train wreck that's why i'm reviewing it for you guys but i'm saying as an x-men fan like there's i can see the x-men i can kind of feel the um you know the intention of the show as being like the original uh morph definitely they you know they got him uh letting everybody know the way he talks and shit he's just not talking the way that the old morph talked um the voice acting was good um the the woman that's she's elderly now too that plays rogue i think her voice is like really on par um you know the wolverine one in the trailer didn't sound good but it, it didn't like as i was listening to him through the show it wasn't like really standing out um you know and then um you know the dynamic with rogue and gambit are good they have a love triangle thing that's going on that isn't G uh, gene scott and wolverine it's a different one uh i will tell you the uh, the art still kind of fucking just irks me dude i don't know what it is about it especially gene gray watching gene pregnant gene gray at least thank god i can pr probably report to you guys Jean Grey has the fucking baby by the end of the second episode. <laughs> so pregnant Jean is over. That shit's done. It would have really sucked if they had her pregnant the whole fucking show dragging on. But they get to the point. Like, that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, at least, like, 
things are developing and the plot's moving. Again, I'm not I'm not telling you to go buy a bunch of Disney stocks and get a year subscription to Disney Plus, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Like, and a fucking X Men fan kind of wrote this shit, um, you know. And again, I don't really see any overt. Again, I, there's subtle messaging shit that I've seen, but it's it's nothing that really stands out too much. Um, there is a part where rogues like talking to magneto and it's almost like she needs to tell him how to fucking do shit thing but it's really a a, she's trying to explain to him how to get the team to trust him because she's like you know they have a a commonality there where when rogue first joins the x-men you know she was a villain with mystique and then she came and that's comic lore and in the show well they don't show it in the show but they show her backstory of it in the show Uh, and that is her um you know her origin how she goes to the x-men and you know has this bad past and they take her in and this this and that kind of the same thing with gambit he's a mysterious guy that has you know an edge and all that but they take him in so it's the same thing so she kind of gives magneto advice and then he listens to her and this this that and the other um they do, um, you know, so the beginning plot's kind of a replay of the Jubilee plot, and then Jubilee kind of alludes to, you know, her for coming to the X-Men and all that, because Sunspot basically runs away and shit. Like, they save him and all that, and then he wants to get the fuck out, and he leaves, and then they go, Friends of Humanity, go try to capture him again and shit. So it's kind of reminiscent of the same thing that happens with Jubilee with the Sentinels and the original X-Men series. So parallel there as well. Um, hold on real quick. <clears throat> okay cool um but yeah so in jubilee's like trying to relate to him and say hey look you know they're here looking out for you this this that and the other um you know C- cyclops is kind of like a reluctant unsure leader you know and stuff and at the same time Jean's trying to get him to leave the team because she's pregnant this this and that and that was a common theme also in the x-men comics about you know Jean being you know wanting to leave the x-men and all that that was a little more like in the original run that was more alluding to when Professor X was uh, using his telepathic powers to like mind white people and like do shit that was like on the line of ethical and non-ethical and shit. Um, so that kind of led in that original run of the X-Men um, to where they wanted to leave the team and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, that's that stuff has happened. So, um, but yeah, so, and then... Magneto shows up. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Then you got Robert Dacosti. He's like in the danger room and shit. And he's like, oh, this is fake. Da, 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 da. And then fucking uh, Wolverine's in there with him. And he thinks Wolverine's fake, but he's fucking not and all that. So they're trying to get him to use his mutant powers, which he doesn't. He like holds back, doesn't do it. Um, and then, um, yeah. And then he ends up, like I say, he ends up running away. I'm trying to find. I had a note. I had some notes on some shit I wanted to cover. Now I don't know where the fuck I put them. But, um,. There, so there's definitely there's some lore inconsistencies. That's what I was really looking for. Because I mean, if the, if it's super over the top woke, that's something I'm gonna notice anyways and shit. Um, so they have Val. So Val Cooper's in it, and she's uh, working with the UN now and all that. Um, so she's talking to them, and they find a robot Sentinel hand in this factory where they save uh, Robert DaCosta Sunspot. Um, and then they're like, well, we don't know where Bolivar Trask is, but. Um, you know, let's talk to Gyrick because Gyrick's under custody because at the end of the other X-Men series, you know, Gyrick's the one who blasts Professor X. That's why Professor S is Professor X is not in this show because he's off planet with the Shi'ar, which is also something that happens in the comics. Uh, that happens at a different time, though. That's actually during the or at the end of the trial of Magneto, which they do at this point um, in this second episode. Um, but yeah, some of it's a little comic inaccurate. Um, so then the, the team's doing stuff and, and, and Jean's like, oh, she sees like the death certificate of a professor X. She goes, oh, that's what's bothering you. Da, 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 da. He's like, well, yeah, but I'm also trying to hold on to his legacy and you know, this, this, and that we got friends of humanity starting shit. Now we got sentinel arms we're finding when we thought the sentinel master mold was destroyed. There's no more sentinels and you know, this, this, that, and the other. Um, and then they go, um, and then Magneto shows up at the end. So that whole thing in the, uh, trailer, that's Magneto showing up, telling me he's going to be the headmaster, uh, and this is the will of Charles Xavier and all that. And they made it in the show seem like he's going to be a villain based off the way he's saying and all that, and that's not really it. He is kind of in this role. And, and originally, again, to the source material and the way that it was originally written, Chris Claremont, um, starts filling in the backstory of Magneto, 
um, and has him, he, you know, the Holocaust origin story. Um, but then he also plans like a redemption arc for Magneto because of the reason why he is because of the Holocaust. And that's why they have the trial of Magneto that happens in the comics. And then they have Professor X go off world. They have him starting to, uh, Magneto's training the new mutants why a storm is leading the team um, when Professor X is gone. Uh, but edit, uh, the editorial, uh, the editors at Marvel didn't want that. They wanted to keep Magneto as a villain. Um, so basically they had a thing where Magneto was going to like, um, he was also trying to negotiate and, and to like form coalitions with the Hellfire Club and stuff like that on top of leading the X-Men and the New Mutants. And that fucking, you know, creeped into a thing where all the new mutants started to quit and all this shit happened. And then he starts, and then it comes out that it was just this elaborate plan to get all the mutants on his side so he can do world domination, da 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 and then he becomes a villain again and shit. Um, but he did actually, the original intent of the Claremont arc was to make Magneto become a good guy uh, at the end in like a full-on redemption. Because um, originally when he was brought on, he's basically replacing the old team and filling them with new members and creating new characters and all that and it was slowly you were ousting all the members of the team you know and then around that time they had replaced everybody um but yeah that's the way that goes i personally like magneto as a villain um, i think a uh, uh, contrary to what people think uh i think he's an anti-villain not an anti-hero um which there is a difference um but yeah he's not an actual anti-hero he's more of, again i would say an anti-villain because he leans as a villain the whole time he's not really heroic but doing villainous things he's a villain that has a reason he's doing it but at the end of the day he's still fucking evil and shit <laughs> so even though it's under the the guise of mutants uh, and then they go robert Costa fucking takes off again and they end up going to a club and shit and i think they do have like a fucking what a, i think they have like a lesbian kiss scene that you barely see uh, and then they start dancing, and Jubilee is, like, dancing and talking to Sunspot and all that, and then some shit pops off, um, and they fight the Friends of Humanity, and then you got a whole little side thing, again, with Rogue, not able to touch anybody, she's at this club, she's looking at everybody, like, you know, kissing and dancing and all that, she's like, if I brush up with anyone with my skin, I could fucking kill them, or put them in a coma, or this, this, that, and the other, leave them with a nasty hangover, whatever it is that she says, and she's talking to Gambit, and he said, uh, I think he says, any man uh, worthwhile would give it a risk with you or something like that. He puts his hand out and holds her hand and all that stuff. And that's when you get the whole morph Wolverine scene, and then morph turns into Jean, and da-da-da-da-da. And that's when Wolverine's like, yeah, they're going to end up leaving. They end up getting in another battle with uh, Friends of Humanity, and they kick their ass, basically. Um, and then they head back to the mansion with Robert DaCosta, <clears throat> sunspot and that's when you get the whole headmaster magneto showing up with the will and all that stuff and then we get into the next episode oh actually um yeah rogue gets one of their weapons fucking destroys it i'm kind of going back because i fucking don't know what i did with my notes oh yeah so then they want to question gyric because they're like we can find bolivar trask um, if we, if we talk to Gyrick, so basically Cyclops tries to intimidate him and interrogate him because he's in prison or whatever for trying to assassinate Professor X. And, uh, and basically he's like, yeah, I'm not going to fucking tell you anything. He goes, well, that's okay. And then Jean taps in from Cerebro, uh, cause she knows how to use Cerebro obviously because of Professor X and she reads Gyrick's mind. And then she finds out Trask is alive. They have the secondary storage facility for another master mold and other sentinels, um, oh yeah, there's some kind of corny dialogue when they're talking to Gyrick too. Something about like you guys are, a, you're a fad storm or uh, something. Being a mutant's a fad. I don't know. Just there was some kind of corny dialogue that I didn't like. Again, the first one I was kind of, it didn't it didn't bother me, but it wasn't really building anything. But they really like on the second episode they start getting into some some plots that are going to be developing in the series. Um, but yeah, so Jean has this thing. So she has a vision of her and the kid. And then she has like all this shit going on. There's like this purple mist and and all this like darkness and shit around her. And this is all from reading Gyrick's mind. And then she starts thinking about this shit. So then the X-Men go. They find out where this the secret location is. 
And it's weird because the Blackbird's like crashing and then a Sentinel like crashes his hand through the Blackbird or does something. But to me, where they're at and the location of the where they're at in the sky, it doesn't seem like a Sentinel would be big enough to fucking do that. At least not the proportions they, they show them as. So I don't know, just that kind of threw me off as weird. Uh, and then, um, so they meet up, they see Trask and then boom. And then Sentinels start coming out of the ground. The thing is like a lot of them are half built. They're like shitty looking. Um, uh, I was telling Neo when I was talking to him on discord, like a while back, I don't like, I guess I'm at rewatching it. I guess you can kind of see it, but like, so in the original X-Men, the first two episodes, like when the Sentinels are walking, they have the screen shaking. I'm kind of looking at it right now and it kind of looks like they're trying to do that. But yeah, I just, I think it was just handled better. Uh, the fight scenes are a little quick and blurry when they're fighting the Sentinels. Um, I mean, they do some like cool stuff and all that, but I don't know. It's, to me, the X Men handled the Sentinels too well and too quickly. They were more, you know, menacing and all that. Now, obviously, this is five years after the, you know, the first series and all that, and you know, so they're more apt to be able to take care of them. They've been training them in the Danger Room, yada yada yada, and all that. But yeah, I just, I just didn't like that part because then at the end, uh, Beast like fucks him up. He gets in a Sentinel, starts controlling him. You got Bishop using his powers. And all that. And then Storm flies in and they, they go Omega level mutant detected, which is cool. Storm is an Omega level mutant. The thing is, again, like, and again, they, they take a lot of the real lore and then they kind of twist and mix, you know, and, that, and that's fine because it is actually a lot more lore accurate in the original X-Men cartoon than a lot of the movies is. Uh, but Storm isn't an Omega level mutant at this point, especially if we're not even at the trial of Magneto. Uh, but again, a lot of these events are taking place out of like order. Um, but she comes in and just blasts all the fucking sentinels, dude. And they all like die. She like blasts them in a lightning bolt, does a big ass fucking whirlwind and it sucks all of them. And they all fucking fall into pieces and all that shit. Um, and then they take out master mold, dude. And that's kind of where I had the biggest problem. Cause usually master mold is a pain in the ass for them to deal with. He's not just somebody to, you know, that they can just fuck up. Um, morph turns into like the blob and fucking Wolverine jumps off of him and fucking chops off the head of the master mold. Basically that's it, dude. They like, they murk his ass pretty easy. Um, so, yeah, I wasn't really a big fan about that. Then they put um, they put Trask, uh, they catch him, they got uh, Val Cooper shows up. And then they look and they go and see the fucking remnants of Master Mold and all that shit. <clears throat> and then they get to the fucking mansion, that's when all the Magneto shit happens. Uh, and you get a little another uh, exposition dump between Jubilee and Robert DaCosta. It's kind of where she tells him the whole background of like when she came to the x-men and how she tried to run away too and then robert DaCosta shows the sunspot mutant power he like flames up his fucking one arm and shit and you're talking about how it's solar energy uh she puts her glasses on and all that shit and all that so um and then yeah so i think he i think he takes off i'm not 100 percent sure so then they're out playing shirts and skins basketball <laughs> which is funny i mean we used to do that shit back in the day too in the 90s right and you got pregnant gene as the fucking ref uh, which is funny. And then Cyclops is wearing his hat backwards. Like, they got a lot of funny shit going on. Uh, but, yeah, so they do all their shit. And then, boom, they sense, the. I think, the alarms and the fucking mansion go off or something. Gets them a notification. And that's when you get that whole Magneto scene. And then that's the end of the first episode. That's the cliffhanger. Last will of Charles Xavier. da 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 da, -da. Talking about he left everything, and you're now uh, everything now belongs to me, my X Men. So he uses that same line that Cyclops used, um, you know, basically letting him know he's going to be the uh, headmaster of the X Men. <clears throat> and then uh, we get to the next episode. They do another recap about like Professor X being dead, and then they kind of show the. Um, yeah, they show, like, the fucking last episode, all the events that happened, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then we get into this one, and then they got a news report. Um, what is it called? Uh, Friends of Humanity. Oh, and then uh, uh, so then there's a thing at a uh, fucking um, Ferris wheel. It almost falls over. Like, it disconnects. Something happens to it. And magically, it lifts up, and it gets put back together and all that. And they save the person on the cart from the Fer Mary Ferris wheel that fucking fell off. And who is it? Magneto flying around in the sky. And, he, and they're like, saving humans? Mutant terrorist turned hero? And then they have like a report and all that shit. And the X-Men are like fucking hounding him about it. Like Scott's like, I don't fucking believe this shit. Da-da-da-da-da. 
And then Jean's worried because they were talking about leaving the team. And now she's like, well, now I know you don't want to leave because fucking you don't trust Magneto. Uh, then they show the Morlocks. Okay, so this is where the first uh, lore issue that I kind of have. So Magneto breaks in and you have the Morlocks. Well, if you know who the Morlocks are, um, they're the ones that end up dying in the mutant massacre that we talked about. Um, when I covered that like way back in the day, uh, but you have the leader of the Morlocks. Damn it, I can't remember her name right now while I'm watching. But then you have Leech, and you have some of the other members. So Magneto comes in and fucks all these Friends of Humanity people up. He, and I am the master of magnetism. Da da da. And he fucks them all up. The problem is he's in the vicinity of Leech. So Leech is mutant power. If you guys have seen X Men: The Last Stand, it's a fucking horrendous X Men movie, probably the worst one. Well, no, I take that back. It's probably better than Dark Phoenix. Uh, but Leech, fucking his mutant power is to suppress other mutant powers that are around him. And they actually use him to make a cure, you know, to try to make mutants, you know, non-mutants and shit. And that's when they go around with the cure guns that are made of plastic. They try to shoot Magneto. And Mystique jumps in the middle and then she gets turned regular into a human. And Magneto's like, well, you're one of them now. And she fucking, you know, she gets left behind by, Mag by Magneto. That's in X3. Uh, but whatever. So that's a lore inconsistency for sure. Um, he shouldn't have been able to use his powers or they should have been minimized um, with Leech being like right there in and around him and shit. Um, but that's just a little gripe, whatever. Um, they also talk in this episode about Magneto needing the helmet and all that. Um, to block Professor X's tele um, telepathy and how him and um, him and uh, Xavier always had like a mind like even though he's like he was never in my mind like reading my mind and shit but he was always there like so they could fucking like keeping tabs on him type thing without like reading his mind and shit um, and then he was t like he was basically knew that he was his present in his mind and all that shit. And he's like, yeah, fucking... So they're talking about that, almost like this bond between them or whatever. And then he's talking about um, how not everything he did was right. And then they mention that, and he goes, yeah, per even Professor X is wrong sometimes. Like, we're all wrong sometimes. And then Scott's like, we'll have Jean scan your mind to see if you're being legit. And she's like, I can't do that. She's like, I access Gyrick's mind because we're looking for a specific thing. She's like, I can't really use my powers to assess honesty and shit like that. She's like, even if Magneto was sincere today, that doesn't mean that he will be tomorrow or the next day or this, this, that, and the other. And then Scott's like, you could scan his mind every day. <laughs> so, uh, which ain't very fucking eth ethical, which is also a kind of a contradiction to the lore. Because like I said, in the original J uh, Jack Kirby Stan Lee run, uh, that's part of the reason that all the team almost disbands and shit uh, when um, I think it's mastermind and shit that um, he mind wipes Professor X and they're like he goes I promise I'll never do that again um, and but yeah so it's funny that you see Cyclops saying to do that on Jean's end to Magneto and obviously he has reasons because of Magneto you know being their fucking biggest foe and all that but it's still just kind of an like antithetical of like the way it was in the comics and shit so it's just something else that I noticed um, but yeah, also in the show, like even the old show, the whole, and they used it in the movies too, the whole Magneto's helmet to block out Professor X reading his mind, that's kind of like an added, like changed lore because originally something to do with the mag electromagnetic waves and all that, he could actually block mind control just naturally with his mutant power and shit like that. The same way in the Savage Land... And other times he could touch and have skin to skin contact with Rogue because they had a short relationship in the Savage Land uh, back in the day. And that's the same thing because he could use the electromagnetic energy around to make it to where she can't absorb his powers and shit like that. Like there's a way to do it, but there's a way that he could block it or whatever. Anyways, uh, but they also have different lore where there's the wiring in his helmet and they got all this different shit. So it has changed a lot. Uh, but anyway, so then Jean's talking to Storm. She's, like, packing her shit up, talking about how they're going to leave, you know, because the baby. And Storm's like, oh, that's so nice. She's like, you know. And then Jean starts crying because she doesn't want her baby to be born a mutant. She, she, and Storm's like, oh, you want it to be born a human? She goes, yeah, you know, this doesn't have to do with the trouble we do and this, this, and that. And then Storm's like, oh, I wonder what it would be like to be human, but I'll never know, you know, da 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 um, and all that shit. So they're girl chatting on things. So, I mean, there is, they, they do have lots of action in this, but yeah, they do have a pretty good amount, but I mean, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I mean, there's lots of talking in a lot of the X-Men shows and stuff, but I think they integrated the fight scenes a little bit better, obviously with the original series. Uh, but again, they're building, they are building a story here and I am seeing like the plot move forward, which is refreshing. 
Um, again, I'm not telling you that a series is going to continue to stay on this track, but I was uh, pretty impressed with the first two. Uh, so then Rogue goes in and starts talking to uh, Magneto. And she's like, yeah, well, you know, you know, he's like kind of worried about, you know, them accepting him or this, this and that. And he's like, well, because of Xavier's sacrifice, because she's like, well, you were about to like take out the world and this, this and that. He goes, well, I'm indebted to honor his last wish. Uh, even if the X-Men won't trust me, you know, perhaps they're not, you know, perhaps they're right not to trust me or whatever. Um, and he's talking about he had too much, you know, he has too much of a past. And she goes, mine does too. And then he goes, oh, and something. And then he it alludes to something and she goes, yeah, well, that's something that they are not going to, they don't need to know about or something like that. And then he goes, I fear you would do your best. And then he tries to take off Rogue's um, glove to touch her and shit. And she fucking backs off and shit. So, and then he said, do you think uh, the team will still trust you? Uh, what does she say? I'm trying to think. Some shit. But, yeah, basically Magneto and Rogue are... Uh, it, and it's funny because I did... Those of you guys that saw my Rogue introduction and my Rogue... Or, well, it wasn't in my Rogue origin. My Rogue introduction, I said she had a lot of unique... Parent, yeah, she said that was a long time ago, Eric. And that cat's got to stay in the bag. You hear me? Uh, and then, boom. And then the fucking helicopters come into the mansion. And it's Val Cooper and the fucking UN or whatever. UN Army Force, whatever. Um but to get back to it, so Magneto flies up. They come in with their helicopters, uh, and, and Scott's like, well, we don't lose our cool against the good guys. And then they come out guns blazing and shit. And he goes, <laughs> you were saying? And then um, but and then Val Cooper comes in. They say, yeah, you're charged with this, this, that, and crimes against humanity. We're here for Magneto. Da -da 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 -da. And then he fucking shows off his powers they're like oh our guns they're fucking resistant they have plastic guns whatever it is he fucking then takes control of all the helicopters spins the propeller blades surrounds them all with the fucking blades of the helicopters and shit and then basically powers everything down it's basically showing i could have fucking murdered all you fuckers if i wanted to dude um and then he fucking doesn't he turns himself in and shit so this gets into the trial of magneto Real quick, though, just to get back. So I saw comments in a Discord server or something, some chat room. I can't remember today. And they were bitching about, um, you know, Magneto and Rogue and this, this, and that. That's a bunch of bullshit. You know, her and Gambit and all that. But, again, like I said in my Rogue intro, her pairings, she's most known for comic runs with Gambit, of course, and then Wolverine. They did lots of team ups, like in the whole Japan arc, the Genosha arc, uh, when Genosha was still like a slave state and all that. Um, and then, um, and then with Magneto, she was in Magneto in a romantic thing um, in the Savage Land, and then she marries and has a kid with Magneto in the Age of Apocalypse, which obviously that's not probably being alluded to here, obviously because the Age of Apocalypse hasn't happened in this universe. Uh, but anyways, I just. I, it is in the lore, so it's not like it's out of the question. And again, a lot of the events are kind of out of place time-wise and all that, but this show is always kind of, again, Night of the Sentinels, the very first pilot episode and the second episode of the original X-Men animated. You know, they take bits and pieces from different X-Men storylines, and they kind of mix them together for the whole Sentinel storyline they're doing. So, I mean, again, it's pretty comic accurate. Um, so then Wolverine's watching the news. Him and Jean stay behind. Jean's still pregnant. Um, and then Magneto's on trial. So meanwhile, you have the um, you have the Friends of Humanity planning attack on the trial of Magneto. So that going to be another uh, lore difference. Again, like I said, uh, Professor X in the comics, he gets attacked as well, and that's when he gets blasted. Um, I'm pretty sure, like 99% sure. It's been a while since I read it, but um, and that's when he goes off with the Shi'ar and everything. But one of the big differences. During the trial of Magneto, it's not the Friends of Humanity that attack. It's the um, the twins, a brother and sister of uh, Baron Von Strucker. Because when Magneto and Xavier first meet, uh, they meet Gabrielle, uh, Gabrielle Haller, which is David Haller's mother. David Haller is Professor X's son. Spoiler alert. Uh, he is uh, the one, Legion, that causes, they have the show Legion on FX. And he's the one that causes the Age of Apocalypse to happen. Because he travels to another reality to kill Magneto. Uh, and then Professor S jumps in the way and he dies. And that causes the beginning of the Age of the Apocalypse. So um, anyways, but yeah, so back to what I was saying. 
the Von Strucker twins, the Magneto and Xavier, that's when they reveal each other's mutant powers, because at first they don't say they're mutants, but Magneto, or Professor X knows Magneto is. Uh, but they defend, like, Hydra's trying to steal gold or fucking whatever, uh, Nazi Hydra gold or whatever, and Magneto and Professor X stop them and shit. And then they go on their own ways because they have two different philosophies, da 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 That's, like, their initial meeting. And then when the trial of Magneto actually happens... That's when fucking the Von Strucker twins attack fucking um, at the trial of Magneto and shit. And then they relinquish him of all his wrongdoings and this, this, that. And he becomes the headmaster of the X-Men when Professor X goes off planet. Um, so it is comic accurate, but it's not comic accurate. So, again, they're kind of changing things up. Um, and then after that, what happens is... I'm just kind of flipping ahead here, dude. <clears throat> sorry like i said i had some notes and i don't know what the fuck i did with them uh okay yeah so wolverine stays behind with gene and then um the team goes to washington dc for the trial meanwhile you got the friends of humanity they're in the back of a van and they got this dude um he puts on a fucking mask uh he calls himself um executor execution some shit like that and he's got this fucking specialized gun he says i've got one shot Okay, and then they go to the trial of Magneto, and they're like, you know, you're on trial for this, this, that, the other, and then he's like talking about as a boy, my people's homes were burned to ash, and then their bodies were burned to ash as well, referring to the Holocaust, um, and then he said, um, never again, which is, his, you know, a famous line, that's Israel's whole thing for the Holocaust and all that shit. Um, and then he talks about, you know, the X-Men did all this great stuff for you, yet, you know, you have other people fucking, you know, ready here to take them out. You got all these protesters. Every time we play by the rules, mutants always suffer the consequences and this, this, that, and the other. Um, so then there's all these protesters and all that shit. And then Wolverine's like, all right, we're going to fucking Washington. And then Jean goes, he's here. And Wolverine's all, who, Apocalypse? And she says, the baby. And he's like, what? And then fucking, so Wolverine, Wolverine's the best person, right? She's in labor. He's like, fucking hitting it around corners in his Jeep. <laughs> She's like, the baby, dude, what the fuck are you doing? So he's driving her ass to the fucking hospital. And um, it's funny that she said he, because I'm thinking, okay, well, if it's a, if she's pregnant and it's Jean Grey, it's got to be Rachel Summers. Because a lot of people are like, oh, it's got to be Cable. Well, it can't be Cable because Cable isn't Jean Grey's son. Cable is Scott Summers' son, but he's not. She, he's not Cable's son. He's Madeline Pryor's son. Madeline Pryor's the clone of Jean Grey. So I'm like, that's weird. They're fucking up the lore on this too. Um, so, anyways, they go back. They flash back. You got all them. Fuck you, Mutie. Stop the Muties. Da 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 da. So you got Cyclops, Rogue, everybody outside fighting. Um, and then all of a sudden, it's kind of weird. So you, and then you got Gambit. And you got Bishop. Bishop gets blasted by this Friends of Humanity executor guy, whatever. And then he fucking dude, he throws a cane, pops uh, Cyclops' uh, visor off, and then he just starts beating the shit out of him with this um, those those weapons. I was saying that kind of morph into guns and shit, and he's just fucking Cyclops up, dude. So it, that was kind of cool, dude, because. In the first part of the first episode, Cyclops is doing all this crazy shit and all that. And then the guy gets ready to blow him up. And I see Lady Deathstrike comes and fucking nails the guy. And I'm like, Lady Deathstrike? But then you find out it's Morph. But then Morph turns into Colossus. Then he turns into fucking Psylocke and starts battling because the guy's got like a bow and this other shit. So, again, good uses of the character Morph for like what his skills are and shit. Um, it was actually pretty impressive, dude. Because they're basically using the characters that aren't being shown in the show but paying homage to those characters using a shapeshifter to do it. So it's actually pretty clever fucking writing. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of blown away on this shit. Again, this is not the best, but this episode was like leagues above the first episode, uh, and I could just see them building the storyline on this shit. So then Storm stays behind with Magneto, because Magneto's in a fucking, um, he's got the energy dampener thing around his neck that they use from like Genosha. You see him in the Deadpool movies, stuff like that. Um, and then basically Cyclops is like, we're losing control out here. Like these guys are going to get through. So Storm's telling him, you need to fucking get your security over to here. And fucking Magneto needs to, um, they, you need to remove the shit off his neck. They're like, we're not going to do that. Who are you to give us orders and all that shit? Uh, meanwhile, fucking 
Gene telepathically tells Cyclops they're having the baby. These motherfuckers. Now, this I didn't like at all because Cyclops would probably never really do this. I, I mean, it's a good ma- male father type thing to show off. Like, hey, Cyclops is the dad. Uh, his paternal instinct. He's going to go be there, you know, for his wife to have the kid and all that. But they're in the middle of a fucking battle with a fucking terrorist organization. Uh, but anyways... Storm tells fucking Rogue to fly Cyclops to Jean, and fucking she does. So they leave the battlefield, and meanwhile, that's why Storm's like saying, release the net collar from Magneto, da 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 da, and all that shit. But yeah, I just, I thought that was kind of weird. But it goes with what they're doing in the story, the convenience of the story, because when they get to the hospital, they're refusing to deliver the baby because the baby's a mutant and shit, because they're mutants. And Wolverine's fucking talking shit. The doctor refuses to fucking do anything. And then Cyclops, again, can you use your powers to fucking absorb the doctor's ability to deliver the baby? So I find it kind of... Cyclops is definitely more edgy on this one. Because normally I don't think Cyclops would have her doing that. um, Because of the whole ethical shit. Like I said, Cyclops... And when I talked about my Cyclops introduction, I talked about how Cyclops is... He's the Captain America. He's the Superman. He's the Boy Scout. He's the follow the rules and this, this, and that. So I find it kind of a miss. Again, they're tr- and I understand. I I don't understand, but I I'm assuming they're trying to up Cyclops up a level because one of the biggest complaints from X Men fans and comic fans was that Cyclops was really nerfed and portrayed badly not only in the x-men animated series less to that degree but in the movies like he was a total cuck and shit um so i see they're trying to boost up his character because that was a massive fan complaint for like decades um but again he's making some choices that cyclops normally wouldn't make anyways then they flash back and you got storm and magneto versus all these fucking terrorist dudes that break in um and they're being defensive and shit like magneto's putting shit together forming uh metal spikes he drops them like into the ground these massive like metal sword looking things but he just drops them around everybody like to where it doesn't hit or don't do anything to anybody and then storm flies up and fucking electrifies it so it kind of makes it like a cage so like all the protesters and everybody they're all stuck in this cage and shit um and then uh what happens is this executor guy whatever his fucking name is he comes in with that special gun he's got it aimed at magneto and storms flying above with the electricity shit and then this dude aims at magneto and blasts and storm flies down jumps in the way boom and then storms gets fucking blasted dude um and then she's like crawling off she's like fried magneto lifts the dude up he because he has metal on his He's got metal armor shit on, his metal mask, the gun. And he picks up like the, almost like the UN, it's like the UN emblem made of like fucking metal and shit. And he has the dude like plastered against it, hung upside down, almost like um, on a cross and shit. Um, And he's got the dude just suspended in the air. And then Rogue's like, the breeze is gone, the moisture in the air, I can't feel any of it. And she starts fucking like crying and shit. (laughs) So yeah okay yeah they're feminizing it a little but she's a woman and she's lost her fucking powers as a mutant and shit and it's funny they kind of foreshadowed it when she talks to Jean Grey about oh I've always kind of wondered what it'd be like to be a human but then she's like fucking on the ground powerless fucking upset and then then Magneto just gets furious he goes see what happens we try to play by your rules we try to do this court shit we try to do this this that and the other here's the reward the X-Men have done all this for you guys and all this good they fought me as an enemy and this is the way you you repay them and they show storm she's crying on the fucking ground lost her powers and shit i mean dude this is this show has better fucking writing than probably all the disney plus shows together again it's not a fucking emmy winning oscar yet i mean we'll see what happens um you know and i'm again i'm not telling everybody to go buy a year subscription to disney plus but i was freaking as an x-men fan a longtime x-men fan i was pleasantly fucking surprised so magneto's pissed off he flies up, magnetic fucking uh, pulse. He takes out the ground and all the people, the judges and Val Cooper uh, in their shit that's stationed in the ground. He picks all of them up in a magnetic orb, brings them into the fucking atmosphere, into space. And he also brings fucking Executioner dude up on the UN emblem, fucking still like crucified and shit. And then he fucking talks to them, and then he uh, he's talking shit. He goes, I could fucking smash you with, oh, he calls him a bigot, straight up, bigot, ingrate, sycophant, worm. And then he sticks his fucking foot over the dude's face. He said, I could squash you with one step. 
um, you know, this, this, and that, and da 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 da. At one time, I would have smited you all for what you've done to Storm, this, this, that. He said, but today I've saved you from your own, and an old friend has challenged me to remember this view of Earth. And he basically shows mercy, doesn't kill the fucking dude, and basically makes it a point. Look how powerful I am. I could fuck all you up, but I'm not going to and shit. Um, but yeah, so, and then meanwhile, they go back to the, um, they go back to the hospital and you got Rogue putting on doctor gloves because she's sapped the fucking, uh, the memories and the intellect of the doctor. Like I said, when I did my Rogue origin, not only does she take like mutant abilities, but she can take people's memories, you know, intellect and things that they're good at doing, etc. And Storm delivers the fucking baby. Uh, so Magneto shows him all this shit. The guy's like begging for his life. Magneto shows him mercy, and then he says, don't make me let you down and shit, meaning don't fuck around, I'm giving you, I'm being, um, you know, I'm being forgiving even though you guys fucking just did this shit to Storm, don't fuck it up, <laughs> fuck around and find out, basically is what he's saying, um, so then they fucking go back, and they're saying, oh, he needs a name, and it's a boy, and they said his name's Nathan, and I'm like, that's what I'm like, okay, so now we have another lore issue, uh, Nathan Summers is the name of the boy, and Nathan Charles Summers, they give him Charles as the middle name, I'm not sure if Cable's middle name is Charles, I don't think it is, whatever, that doesn't really matter, my thing is, wait a minute, Jean Grey's not the mother of fucking Nathan Summers, what the fuck's going on here, okay, so I took another note, we got another lore continuity thing, which, whatever, we'll get to it, uh, then you see, um, par- uh, the UN pardons Magneto, aid to Genosha, um, and then they talk about the mutination of Genosha. So they're given Magneto Genosha, comic accurate again. Again, not during this time period of when the trial of Magneto was, but again, they mish- mishmash the fucking lore. But again, the cartoons were always more lore accurate than any of the movies. Um, and then uh, Scott and fucking Magneto have a little conversation. Um, he's telling him to be, be vigilant. You know, tragedy lures with fortune first, meaning you have good shit go on, and then bad shit ha- tends to happen. So keep your guard up, basically, type shit. And then he puts his hand on Cyclops and shit, fucking, like, trying to be a brother. And then Beast is analyzing fucking Storm's DNA, what the fuck happened to Storm and all that. Um, and he said the inhibitor chips use a certain radiation uh, to temporarily neutralize our mutant powers when they put the collars on us. That executioner's rifle, rifle hit you with a fucking concentrated dose of that. And then they're like, well, when is she going to get her power back? And he basically says... Well, I have to run more tests. And they're like, come on, dude. Like, be straight up. And he said, probably never. It looks like it's permanent. Um, And then they have, like, a, you know, Gene consoling Storm and all that shit. Um, So that's interesting. Now, I I tried to kind of stay away. But, you know, I heard some shit, like, on the internet and this, this, and that. And everyone's like, oh, my God. Who would have thought Storm would have lost her? But, well, actually, (laughs) right around the time of the trial of Magneto and shit, it's actually before it a little bit, but when Storm becomes the leader of the X-Men, it's actually the last issue that Cyclops is in before he then becomes on X-Factor and shit. Uh, Storm and uh, Cyclops battle when Storm is depowered and doesn't have her mutant powers, um, and she beats him. So the fact that she doesn't have her mutant powers, even though it's again and it's in a different way, it is kind of in, in 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 line with the lore that there's a point in time where Storm doesn't have her mutant powers. I'm sure she's probably going to get them back in the show, dude. I highly doubt, especially the way they had her fucking, fucking people up, dude. Which is another thing they did wrong in the movies. <clears throat> that is the one thing. There's not many things I like in that Dark Phoenix movie. Um, but they did have some cool Storm moments where she was actually uh, fucking looking kind of Omega level. Um, but again, yeah, that, that's not happening. So then we have Magneto and Storm, or no, Mag- Magneto and Rogue talking and fucking, um, in fucking the office and she fucking touches Magneto and he puts his hand out. You see a magnetic spark, which is indication of him, you know, manipulating magnetic fields so they can actually touch and shit. And then you got Morph going and talking to Mag- uh, Wolverine. And I think this is the thing that's going to end up blowing the fucking show up. Uh, he brings Wolverine some beers, then he turns into Sabretooth, da, 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 da. and then Storm leaves her meeting with Magneto, and you see Gambit fucking crying because he's fucking spying on them and shit, um, and then you see a bag and some dude leaving, and, or somebody leaving, sorry, some dude, you see Storm leaving, I saw purple, I was thinking Gambit, uh, but yeah, then you see Storm leaving, 
she jumps on a bus and she wrote a letter to Jean, like, I'm fucking leaving, da 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 you know, what good am I to you guys, you know, depowered. And then so Jean's reading the letter, she's fucking crying, Rogue's fucking all sad, and Magneto's like, we're going to respect your decision, da 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 fucking. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then uh, everybody looks depressed as fuck, and then Morph, is it Morph or Bishop? No, it's Morph. He's like, we have to respect your decision, da 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 da, da. And Gambit's like, is that so? Uh, that blast had your name on it, Mona me. You know, basically, like, you're the motherfucker. You should be depowered, not her. And then Morse's like, what? She'll be coming right back, and she'll be coming right to the door, and da 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 And then the doorbell rings. And then Morph fucking uh, goes, see? And then he fucking walks up to the door, and he fucking answers the door. And who do you see? Jean Grey, or someone that looks like Jean Grey, saying, I need the X-Men. And everyone looks, and Scott's like, Jean? And then you see the other Jean kind of have a look in her face. And that's the end. That's a fucking cliffhanger. So, they probably didn't bastardize the lore. Uh, Jean Grey is probably Madeline Pryor, and the Jean Grey that's at the door is probably the one that was the Phoenix Force that they resurrect um, that comes back and shit in the comics, if that's what they're doing. Now, the only difference in the lore in the comics Madeline Pryor is just a woman that looks like Jean Grey. That's a clone of Jean Grey that Scott Summers meets, and he knows her name's Madeline Pryor, you know, and he ends up fucking having cable with Madeline Pryor. So that's probably what it is. Um, I I don't think they're going to just say that it's Jean's kid and that Madeline's the one showing up. I think Jean's showing up all fucked up because she's just been, like, resurrected or whatever from the Phoenix ship. So that's where I think they're going. So again, again, I mean, I'm... <laughs> I fucking trust me. I went in guns blazing on this shit. I was writing down lore fucking inconsistencies and this, this, that, and the other. Again, there is some little social shit they're throwing at you. And again, it's only the first two episodes. So I'm sure they're going to pile that on and it'll get there. But for the first two episodes, I, I, the first one again, kind of a lull. They had some cool shit. They showed Cyclops as a boss and this, this, that, and the other. Again, I still don't like the animation. I'm trying to get used to that. Um, but yeah, I mean, ob- honestly, again, the plot is going somewhere. There's writing. There's shit happening. There's some twists. That it was an actual fucking cliffhanger instead of this. Look, wolf's at the end. <gasps> fucking, there's the cliffhanger for the Bad Batch. Like that's not a that's not a cliffhanger. That's not a fucking you know. This shit actually has you kind of like what the fuck. Like I said. Is it Madeline Pryor at the door? Is it Gene at the door? How are they going to play this shit? And I'm, you know, and I was gotcha, like, haha, gotcha. And what are you idiots doing, dude? Gene Gray didn't have cable. Fucking Madeline Pryor did. Um, so it's interesting, dude. We'll see how it goes. I'll keep reviewing it. I uh, hope you guys like my review. <laughs> I was kind of long winded. Um, but yeah, again, I, I kind of really wanted to deep dive into it because I, and I have seen the first um, episode and I wasn't too impressed. I, uh, I think, um, yeah, Mr. Anderson had uh, emailed me or uh, Discord messaged me in Discord, and he's like, "Yeah, if I can want to see what your reaction is." I'm like, "Yeah, I seen the first one. I said it's got some cool stuff. I didn't know. I don't know how much I like Moonwalk Cyclops blast in the ground. I mean, technically, again, there are optic blasts, not laser beams. So he's using the concussive force, of the blast, to fucking shift himself backwards. Um, it could work. I've never seen him do it in the comics or anything like that. But you know, it was interesting. Oh, there's another part where they jump out, like when the Blackbird breaks and he's like falling to the ground. He actually sky dives head first down and then blasts his optic blast to slow himself down to land on his feet that i thought was a little exaggerated but you know whatever i mean it's forgivable uh oh damn blackroid what up blake compared to the movie cyclops in the cartoon was a top g the series gave him lots of moments yeah yeah it did yeah and it did some of his origin stuff and you know the star jammer shit like they did do lots of cool stuff all right, you have a good night. Yeah, later on, Masquerade. Appreciate you sticking around, man. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to try to... I got to get my streams going earlier. Um, tonight, I think, kind of worked out because Melvin and Grizzy were both streaming before me, and it just kind of worked out. But yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try to get these. I want to start to get them by 9, but I think 10 is going to kind of be my start point. But yep, we are good. That's going to be about it. I, I apologize. I couldn't get into... I told you in the beginning, I'm like, I know it's a pack. There's all this stuff going on. It's going to be a pack stream. Um, but the cool thing is a lot of the shit I had already set up for this stream that got put on the back burner because all the news and all the shows and all the shit coming out 
that stuff that I can tackle on the next stream, and I should be pretty prepared for it, so I should be able to stream earlier. So I appreciate everybody that uh, came and, and signed in and was here, and um, I appreciate all the support. Uh, anybody who's not here, but I know you catch the replays and all that, I appreciate it. And then everybody watching my videos, sharing my stuff out. I mean, my sub count's going up. I'm getting I'm getting some pretty good watch time and all that good stuff, so I appreciate all the support you guys are giving. Uh, it's definitely much appreciated. Uh, thanks again for the donations for um, – oh, Christian Romero has subscribed. Oh, I didn't get to see – let's see. Oh, it didn't work. I'm trying to do my – subscription thing but it's not popping up on here oh you know what let me go to my main screen nope shit oh here it is let me go to this let's try this oh let me ask you can you guys hear the can you guys hear the music christian romero just subscribe so last time when melissa was doing donations last week nobody could hear the music um appreciate it christian romero oh that was a long time ago hold on okay chris king chris oh that didn't work so now it just keeps showing that shit all right dude well i fucked up well chris appreciate the donation buddy everybody have a good night and remember Peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion, I gain strength. Through strength, I gain power. Through power, I gain victory. Through victory, my chains are broken.